coming up on this episode of The Brain Drain Show. Joined to our left is the one and only Chris, Chris Haslam. Haslam. If we can have a round of applause. In- Wensley Dale, horse Lou. This one's the strong one. Kirby Lonsdale. <laughs> I remember I was trying to shoot a one footed front board, shove it, and the guy was like, no, it's too circusy of a trick for a sequence. To me, round three, I won. That was my intro to the world. It changed my life. Who gives a shit about them? I won that for me. Sponsor me videos just piled in the cafeteria. And the guy was like, day one, check this out. Rodney showed up and started giving me tensor trucks, getting to skate with day one every single day. Oh, you got enough cheese on there, mate. I know, he's greedy. Would you like this one, Mr. Haslam? Well, you got a smorgasbord on that cracker, man. <laughs> if you had like tight pants and whatever, you're the rail guy. I'll take the Sasquatch. I got here because of all that. We're basically the only ones doing technology in our boards at the time. Those 10 years with Globe allowed me to do a lot of things. And if you can't separate fun skating with the business of the industry, then you're messed already. Retta, me, myself, and um, Daywan did a whole intro with peanut butter and, and jam sandwiches. Chose cheese and crackers, and then we had to refilm the whole intro. That was the last international trip I took with Daywan, by the way. I had like 17 songs for this part. Every single song got denied. Like, I don't give a about just being another brand you have like three years to film a part you shouldn't have any filler i started feeling crazy and both of my kidneys had failed drink water hello and welcome to another great episode of the brain drain show with me ford brookfield i'm joined to my left with my trusty co-host and great friend Great friend, I like that. Great Toby, friend. Toby Bachelor. <laughs> With Toby Bachelor. Didn't here. sound that sincere, but I'll take it. No, it's very <laughs> sincere. And we're just going to cut straight to the chase. This is a completely random one. Um, I'm too excited, so we're just going to get into it. Joined to our left is the one and only Chris, Chris Haslam. Haslam. If we can have a round of applause. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, man. Thank you. Thanks for coming, dude. There no problem. Um, no problem. We just spoke a bit about it off camera, but the, the randomness of why you're here and the whole wedding thing is just like yeah blowing our minds well i mean when i when i first was coming over um brad from route one was like this was before anybody knew i was coming he randomly messaged me as well from yeah. the skate shop in london being like i think i saw you on one of the tube stations all oh, right yeah. was that you imagine just randomly that's seeing what people. well yeah. that's what he said to me he's like I, I, are you in london i was like no but i'll be there in like three days yeah and i haven't come here in like years so yeah. that's already the first random experience and then I like so I skated with him and that's where we skated when you seen the post of me at South Bank. I had to break it to you people are going to notice you in the street. Well I don't know well I mean I was you know I was just I mean it was miserable weather. Yeah it's been so yeah, it's, it's been, like this is probably the first kind of sunny somewhat getting kind of dry day. Yeah I mean it's still pretty moist outside yeah. but yeah. 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 I mean, we skated last night for a bit, but it was still kind of damp. You just got to well, go get it when you can, and you? Yeah. You've been like skating out, out here? Or do you go yeah, you out yeah. here? Mini ramp looks fun, though. You yeah. skate inside. Huh? What is it? 20, it's 24 foot wide, the mini. Yeah. We've actually got another one. I didn't show you, but there's another one by the, the shop. In the store. But we're, we've got so much stock at the minute that it's used storage. Hmm. That one's more, what's that, five, isn't it? Five. We have six yeah. and seven five, extensions. Six, yeah. Oh my God, it's a big one. And this yeah. one, super fast. This too. one looks friendly. I like that yeah, one. Yeah, that's yeah. so that's like the beginner's ramp because we do a skate school here as well. So I'm fine with that. <laughs> three foot high, 24 foot wide. And then we built the, the indoor bit to it just to fill mm. the space. And then... Toby wanted a slappy curb, so he changed I wanted, the whole car park. Oh, ba- was, basically yeah. everything outside in the car park is low impact for me right well that curb uh, there's a pretty similar curb set up in uh in vancouver where i skate that yeah, i yeah. that me and a couple other people also built yeah, yeah. Are you, are you into slappies what i didn't learn how to slappy until i was like 30. yeah same yeah but then it's kind of addictive isn't it it's like you get that first like the proper front side slappy ground once yeah. you get that it's kind of like a whole other avenue of skating isn't it where you your board doesn't have to leave the ground yeah i know well, yeah. and that's great for me it's and the old needs. man sport man yeah, yeah. yeah. i love yeah. it right. and and like, i mean the you know, there's always there's so many tricks you can learn on slappy stuff it's... well i skated with uh jason adams and he's oh. like oh, we love yeah massive adams. Fan of jason adams. yeah he's he was doing some crazy ones yeah, like some no comply but he's been doing that forever isn't i know he? i know i know he has i think he was one of the first you remember his jason jason those thunder trucks it was like a it was like a thunder video on YouTube. It's probably still on there. 
Know. But that was amazing. He's like doing proper front side slappies, then no complying out, but he's doing it so quick. Oh, he does like slappy front Smith grinds and stuff. I've seen no? that. Like, yeah, mm. they're so good. There's a few kind of like that, the, the slappy front Smith. The other one that is like blows my mind is when people do just front side nose grind. Just slappy front side nose grind. That just one straight up. That one is surprising. That when I was trying to learn front side, I would do that yeah. by accident. I need to do that. I, I think it's just like the mental block. You know what you know with slappies, it's your front truck doesn't lift up. That yeah, lift it. yeah. And there's there's something there that I just can't quite. Get well, I think when with. you're learning, when I was learning, my my body weight was too much in the front. So when I hit it, yeah. I was like, it jolted me to where I was doing the nose grind, and then it's just like a ledge kind of, you know. So yeah, but yeah, I need to get that. I mean, I don't know. I think the front side one by itself is like, hmm. you know, the it looks so sick though, doesn't it? But I mean, the way Jason Adams skates curves and. Like you're saying, oh, and he skates really fast too. Yeah, that, that yeah, also helps. Really fast. Yeah. yeah, proper screeching for it. Slappy front smith is sick. We wouldn't be. It wouldn't be. A, <clears throat> it wouldn't be a curb like discussion if we didn't mention how good our mate Will Sayer is. Yeah, Will Sayer. Curbs. Our mate Will Sayer. He um. He's in Australia at the minute, isn't he? Yeah, he skates like he loves the little zip zinger boards, and he then skates some, curbs with those. Yeah, and then sometimes <laughs> not only that. So I we got a zip zinger board cut out the middle, put them together, so the wheelbase is like five inches you know like those kids like skateboards yeah, like yeah, yeah. we drill them together and he did he does like slappy crook flip outs on those like this dude is like how big are these trucks though are they like what, 129s what or know, something he, or he they... probably puts like 139s on it for the, for yeah. the 139s oh but he's kind of gone from he only used to skate those and he's gone from that to skating like the big boys. 10 seven fives but <laughs> he grew up skating with I don't know if you if you'll know him uh, Chris Atherton. He did a video called A Golden Egg. Avi, he's more he's nicknamed, Atherton. Yeah, Chris he's, Atherton, he's, yeah. He's, why do I know that? His nickname's old. Avi, and he does like he does insane. He used to skate with like extendable long arms on. And oh, stuff. I've seen that. Yeah, and he's got one yeah. of the best no complies. Yeah, yeah, I've ever. seen that. Like, he's, he's been he, around for literally yeah, decades. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. And he's just kind of came out of like hibernation. He's been filming. Coming with back us. again. Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, he just had awesome. a part out in our last video. Oh, sick. But he's he's sick. But watching him and Will skate just blows my mind all yeah, the time yeah it's a whole like, other thing like know. the stuff that they can both do is is crazy yeah um let's uh start from the beginning just to get the the kind of basic questions out of the way so you're from ontario niagara falls yeah i was born in niagara falls ontario yeah right. okay. canada and where, where where do you live now I'm I'm on the west coast really. I mean I'm I stay a lot in Vancouver and then my my folks so you're house. In Canada, yeah, well I'm back and forth. Yeah, I'm yeah. like my folks house are in in Blaine, which is like right across the border from Vancouver. Yeah. So I'll go back and forth there and then I'll come up and down from LA and stuff. So Yeah, yeah. Nice. I'm uh I have a van that I kinda sleep in a lot. So the idea of van life becomes more and more appealing. Yeah, I mean just what, with how expensive it is to buy a house here. Yeah, the amount well, of times I'm like, everywhere. should we just get like an RV and just run it off the electricity here? Yeah, we've got yeah, solar panels upstairs, and we, you got 24 hour security because I'm not going anywhere. Let's face it, and I'll just <laughs> yeah. be here. If but, you if you have a space that you can do that with, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, and then you can still just go places if you want to. So. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I mean, you have zero responsibilities, but if you have any kids or something, it'll be a little bit difficult. But yeah, I've got one. Yeah, well, then you gotta like somehow, unless yeah. you homeschool them or something, you know. No, they go to school now. Yeah, yeah, that's that's See, one. For I mean, logistics. Absent dad syndrome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be getting involved in that. But <laughs> um, what age did you start skating? I started when I was uh, thirteen. Uh, I was thirteen, just about turning fourteen. I think. Yeah. Yeah. What so was the inspiration behind that? I was in Singapore. Like I moved to Singapore in '91. And then me and my brother were just, I mean, we were, just, well, we were going to school down there and we seen some guy in our neighborhood doing it. And went on what, straight away. well, his birthday was in November. His, his, it is in November. So when his birthday came <laughs> around, we got, we got boards from my parents and stuff, you know? Mm. And then that was, that was it. And then we just started meeting these, uh, these guys that we saw skating around. Actually, we used to skate with some dude that had no legs. He would do handstands. He would bomb the hill, but stop. Oh, and he's ha doing a handstand. Oh, you do everything, but the way that he would stop uh, the board was he had he made this massive glove. He like taped his fingers, and he would literally just cup the wheel and hold no it. Way. So he would oh, slow down. His hands were the brake pads. Yeah, he no would no just way. literally <laughs> slow down. On, on, but he would do handstands, like yeah, you know, 
past businesses in the windows and stuff is pretty awesome but <laughs> but yeah so we just started because it was you know something that looked kind of cool and yeah nobody really was at the school we were doing it nobody was skating for sure what year was this uh uh what was it coming on to 94 i think right okay because like i mean i, look, I watched it again this morning but you know we'll, we'll talk a bit more about it later but You've got a really deep bag of tricks, and some of those are kind of from the late eighties style. Yeah, you know, like you do a lot of crowd slice stuff, and you know, obviously, you you must have been inspired by. Well, in Singapore at the time, I mean, I I think the videos I was watching back in Singapore because we were that was before internet, so we had like yeah. five, we were like five or six years behind, you know. Yeah, yeah. So we were like the skate shop, Go Sports Skate Shop in Singapore, Eddie Go. Still there. Um, yeah, right. surprised it was like thirty years, forty years, yeah. Maybe. yeah um they would uh they would get these old videos um and by the time you guys were watching like mouse or something we would still have like yeah, yeah. you know the old plan b videos mm-hmm. and stuff so we we're delayed i don't know if that was any uh uh kind of brought any influence on my skill sets or tricks or whatever but uh i think when i skated for a long period of time i, I realized what i liked to do mm-hmm. and what <clears> i liked <throat> to see and then mm-hmm. I gravitated towards watching more videos of that nature and then I kind of like you know useless wooden toy stuff and mm. like all that stuff and then I would bring try to bring things that people wouldn't that weren't common in skating like a lot of I always use uh, Julio de la Cruz stuff I mean there was a lot of pressure flip stuff yeah. but um I tried to like maybe do similar tricks that weren't so pressure flip them maybe flip them maybe bring them to something that was kind of a little bit more relevant in the time but but none of the stuff i ever did was stuff that i claimed of doing first you know yeah, yeah. like i don't mm-hmm. i i'm not big on like nbd claiming you know mm-hmm. like i don't how the hell can you say that you there did anything like in the early reason. 90s like they yeah. were doing like quadruple heel flip shove it's like how the hell yeah. like there's got to be somebody i always like chris hall or like uh you know uh, who else? Chris Hall, like Fissel, all these mm-hmm. dudes, like they would, Rodney, like yeah. it's insane. Like, I mean, I might have added two of the tricks they already did together and made it yeah, into yeah. something more relevant now, but it wasn't anything that like I came up with, it. like inventing the kickflip. Like it wasn't. I think the safest thing to say is that Rodney did everything. Yeah. But a lot of it, yeah. I've seen in a video part, there's, I said to Toby yesterday, there's one trick I've seen you do that I've never seen before. Well, that's a lie. One trick that I've seen you do that I also filmed recently that I've never seen before. <laughs> and it's a front side tail. It's a front tail, front side flip out, and you cancel it with your back foot on the oh, rear like of the a tail. Casper, yeah, that um, was in Portugal. What do, you, what do you call that? Tri- what's that flip that you call Front that? tail cancel flip is what we call uh, it. A cancel, I would call because it, uh, a cancel flip would be with your like you literally kick flip and then you heel flip right or you yeah I mean I would call that a Casper. I was going to say because your the board's half flipped, your front foot's under it, your back foot's on the tail. So that, yeah, a cancel Casper, would it? probably be with your front, you know, yeah. just yeah, like. Almost but if you're the one that you did there, you're making. And it's not a hospital flip either. You're making full contact with the tail. That was Matt Tomasello. If oh yeah, Matt. Matt. Yeah, yeah, Matt. He's got crazy ones. Yeah, he's got a full part coming out that we've been filming. So I've been going back and forth. To You've been filming. Oh man, yeah. yeah he's stay, got crazy. Basement. He's got crazy footage. Yeah, it, it's insane because when he puts out a clip, obviously there's thousands and thousands of comments, and I'm just sat there like, well, he's got it. He's. I'm, I'm he, like, dude, I sleep in his bedroom. Like, yeah, well, in, in his basement. He's got. He's I'm got so something there. Sleep in his bedroom. <laughs> like Julio De La Cruz, that one where yeah. he. Yeah. That so it's funny one? when you mentioned that earlier, like that whole useless one toys, like it brings back all the, the nostalgic feelings when you first watched that video and then 1281 with yeah. Julio. Mm-hmm. And then what, what is that that one? Because he, he does some mad stuff. In There's that. one that he does down a three stair yeah. uh, and it's like with a body barrel and he called it a um, a dream flip. because yeah, it, he kind of turns front side, doesn't he? And then it goes back. He, he said, it, he, said he, he in his head, he, he was got it came to him in a dream. So he calls it the dream flip, but it was like a... so rad. I think it was like a, a pressure flip and then like yeah, I'm trying to remember. Casper 180 or something yeah. down the three stick. Because I, I was doing a bunch of that for my Transwell uh, Pro Spotlight kind of yeah. weirdness. 
and he was um he was messaging me online and i would i would hit him up and be like what the hell is this thing or yeah 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 because yeah. he was well ahead of the game yeah, then wasn't he technically ahead. yeah like, that whole part where it's kind of all, nearly all in slow motion isn't it and there's one where he does like um like a half like it's like a half pressure flip and then he like hits on the nose 360 yeah. shove it off like this weird thing he, he's done some stuff that i've still not seen done yeah, I know. Okay. Well, that's like the closest thing is Matt Thomas. Well, he's like. he's taken a yeah. That's what yeah. that's he, same mindset. But Matt, the the ones that, there's two things that I think of when I think of Matt. Oh, three. The crazy. And I think I know one of them that you're gonna say if I can guess. Yeah, go for it. Does he pop in the air and his board folds into? A no. Well, no. Well, I I I uh I was just I was gonna I was combining all of those as one thing. So that was that's all that stuff he does with the the spring and it like yeah. balances and all that He's stuff like such an incredible skateboarder yeah that stuff is one and then he did the um the thing that julio does where he like pressure half flips it but then pinches it with his feet and ollie's up in there yeah and holds it holds it julio yeah. would do that down a gap i think it was in might have been useless wooden toys 1281 useless wooden toys i, I don't think he was yeah. in was he in useless wooden toys or i don't know i don't maybe too I think it was early 1281, 1281? Yeah. yeah it was probably 12 but he does it down a gap but it's so perfect so I was trying for ages to do that, but it's obviously an ultimate sackable trick, isn't it? That it's Fucking insane. Yeah, yeah. and then like you, it's almost like you po well, you po going in the air. No, no, it's it's a it it's a side press, so you pressure it, and it doesn't go up this way. It like goes this way, and you pinch oh, it. Okay. So you. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. you, you pressure it, and you pinch it this way, I and then do it. it. So Julio would do that, and yeah. he, I remember doing. I see him do it on a gap, but it was like so sick, and then. For ages, I wanted to try and maybe do it, and then I seen Matt, and he was doing it like this high, you know. Yeah. And I was like, "Oh my god, this dude's got it!" And then the one clip I did, what it was the he did a only impossible, but it was his front like a judo only impossible where it mm -hmm. wrapped around the back of his leg. Yeah, like I learned that one, but I saw you doing that one where you kick your front foot. Yeah, judo. but dude, I I seen the footage of him doing it, and mm -hmm. I don't know how the hell he got his foot that high. Because every time I try to film one, it does not look like what his looked like. His was like, his foot was like way out, like whoosh. Yeah. I can't get my foot out that high. I mean, just getting your front foot out of the, the way that oh, way it's a nightmare. impossible, like, it's a, doesn't it's, make any sense, does it? Yeah, it makes you it's feel like you've never skated before. It's almost before. like blind, isn't it? It just, should be right behind you, though. Just yeah. watching, <clears throat> watching him skate it's one of the most mind blowing things because yeah, he bet. can do he can do everything that's conventional. Like mm. if you've ever seen his old what is it, ten thirty one mm. like stuff like that. He Was he on ten thirty one? Yeah, he mm. can skate like handrails, ledges, everything. A lot of guys. And then, is V Tech still doing ten thirty one? That was his thing. No, I think that's I think that's ten thirty one since Halloween, isn't it? Ten thirty one was Svitek. It was uh Ben Rayborn. That's uh, right. Yeah. I think Chad Knight. We mm, I did a trip to the Cayman Islands and Tenter Svitak was there with Chad Knight and uh, Chad Knight came Greg here Harbor to the and... indoor park for Storm. Oh really? Yeah, on the uh, Osiris tour. Oh, back then. Yeah. What was the Osiris tour that came over here? That was a Storm, wasn't it? Yeah, the Storm. Was yeah, it? yeah. It was when the video came out and they were at the old indoor park here. I just went to my friend's wedding. He, uh, uh, Mark Nichols. Do you know that name? I know the name. He, yeah. I think he filmed and probably edited a lot of the Storm video. Rad. Yeah. Josh Casper. Let's go about that. But anyway, big, classic. Big, sorry, big, Matt, yeah. going off on. Matt Tomasello. Yeah, on sorry. Real. Like anyone, I mean, it's quite funny, isn't it? Like Ellington and Kada, they've been doing pressure flips. Yeah, they, like the standard yeah. one eight, and they're dude, getting Nate, them off the ground. Nate Sherwood, dude. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He did big spin back, big yeah, spin back all, pressure flip to fakie nose grind. Yeah. And he would do like. How does he do that? I have no idea. Does he direct? Have you ever met Nate? Yeah, I know does Nate. He, you, yeah. Like, does he have really tight trucks to do that? That or? I don't know. I never skated his board. Well, Tomasello has crooks on, and he's always like, "Dude, these, these things don't turn." I think that, crooks, that, really? Yeah. Damn, I used to use their bushings, and they used to turn pretty good. But yeah, he does he crank them tight? Probably. I mean, at the same time, this dude's got bolts and rivets in his board because yeah, they yeah, self-spin, yeah. so you can't really take Spring. anything. Self springs and lockets and stuff. Yeah. I bought one home with me where you like wind the board back round on itself, and as you jump up, it like latches round. But so, the, but the hinge is so violent that if you catch yeah. your toe, it's just like yeah. But that's what it needs to be that quick, doesn't it? Yeah. His um his board is in the museum over here this way, isn't it? It's in a uh, the Ripley's, believe it or not, museum. Yeah, with a a one museum. of them, or like he like he's done like 
hundreds of those, hasn't he? Dude, yeah. in his room, it's like he's got <laughs> he's got boards. He's like yeah. a proper mad scientist kind of thing, isn't because, he? Yeah. Because when I said to him, um, you know, and he said in interviews, like, how come you decided to go down this road? He's just like, well, I wanted a new challenge because I've been skating for so long. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. then a bunch of the dudes always say, because a lot of his boards are spring-loaded, a load of the guys are just like, dude, all you have to do is jump in the air and it does the trick for you. Yeah, I'm sure there's more but, to it. No, that. but the thing is, like, you <coughs> can, like, I watched Will say, Slappy, the Slappy King, on those boards, and he could not make it work. And then Tom Sello's like, no, dude, you just do it what like What do you mean? This. Could, what, couldn't just stand popping on the board, stuff. Popping on the board, and they were all... Self Spinning flipping. around, yeah. But Sarah well, couldn't do it. it up, but then it? Tomasello's on it, and he's like, "No, for this one, you need your foot in yeah, these right. pressure points." Yeah. And he's got one where he tray flipped it, and it's on four hinges, and it all just yeah, just uh, it's it. insane. I can't comprehend it, but I get to film it, so I, I, kinda... I find myself quite blessed to be able to no, that's see that creativity and skateboarding. Not many people. No, like, I think he's the only one that does that, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. to that remember. degree. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's good that that kind of stuff is more welcome now than it's ever been in skating there, yeah. there was a time where oh, yeah. doing that kind of it was like you well, know, even, a cool guy you know not not wanting to get I mean, back in the night well i can only really say about the early 2000s because that's when i was there but even yeah. at the beginning of that it was like a lot of stuff was kind of like i don't because even some of my stuff i, I was going to say did you get a lot of stick for some of the that was one of the questions no yeah. uh, i mean the only ones i mean from maybe from if, you know people in their own house like this yeah. dude what the hell is this dude doing? whatever I, on a what, yeah like whatever i didn't mm. see but i remember i was trying to shoot a one-footed front board shove it down a, it was going to be a sequence down the uh long beach courthouse rail the one that uh you did one right in the almost yeah d different rail this one rail was the one that like uh alpha yard i think he did kickflip back tail big spin or something that tom penny was sitting right in the sorry video or something I'm trying to, it, Eric Fukuhara, Derek Fukuhara did like. Is it, the, is it green the rail? No, it's a little like uh, square one. Yeah, flat square one. You would know the one. I don't. It's not there anymore. But I was gonna do it down there, and the guy was like, "No, it's too circusy of a Fuck trick for a sequence." Now was the only one and only. I think I don't think I got too many. I I joked about it for years, but mm. um, just do me doing circus tricks, but. I think that was the only time where they somebody was like, I don't want to do Gave it. Gave a negative. But I don't, I don't care, dude. No, like, what the hell? Fuck it. Fuck it. Don't and now look at it. It's like, yeah. you know. Well, it's so hard to, you know, skating, everyone's exactly the same. It's so hard to make your mark on something to be like, you know, Matt's got his thing that he's doing. And and yeah. and that's it. Like, people yeah. are going to see anybody that does that stuff and they're going to be like, oh, he's copying Matt. Mm. Yeah. And it's so hard to be that person now the thing is i think matt's stuff so hard that i've not seen anyone try to copy it yet yeah i mean that's what i mean but, but yeah. it doesn't matter because that's him and if yeah, you 100%. it's, it's it, almost like a whole other sub genre of skating isn't it like that oh yeah he does it's i mean it's, it's, it's proper it's, mad scientist stuff well, it's, it's, it's insane it, skating now is in a place where you can do whatever you want like, yeah then i mean that's awesome you can be an olympic guy and yeah you know whatever do that stuff and then you can do you know the stuff that matt does you can you know, it's all personal expression and now yeah, you can exactly, actually yeah. before it was supposed to be which it was but now it, it's like now it's a lot yeah it's so open now. to everybody that it's not just like oh i hate this dude so he's never gonna mm. you know show yeah. what he can do on a skateboard because everyone hates what he does now it's like whatever you like can't ignore social things media now because everyone's got a camera in the hand there's, a, there's an audience for everything yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah before we before we go off subject one of my favorite stories about penny i was in manchester and I turned a corner and they were just like Penny and Muska. <laughs> yeah. And um, I was just like, you're right, Tom. And you're like, yo, do you want to come for a skate? <laughs> and I skated with him for two days and just filmed like him, Muska, Sasha Daly. What were they here for? Was it it was a super tour. Um, Spencer Hamilton. Mm -hmm. Oh my fucking God. Yeah. He's Canadian. Isn't like, he? Li Sasha like and Lizard Spencer, King. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and I just like turned a corner. Is that and, Supra? Yeah, it was like yeah. a super yeah. tour. And I was just like, oh shit, it's Tom. And he was just like, yo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah, so he gave me his email. Never replied. But. Yeah, then it, did <laughs> you ever it? skate much with Penny back in the day? Because we back fucking day, no. love Penny. No, story. We're, we're I, probably the biggest fans of Tom Penny ever on the show. I skated with Tom in Bar. I, I, I lived in Barcelona for almost a year mm -hmm. before my last. I filmed a lot of my last part in like 2019, but in Barcelona. So I was there a lot. I was uh, living there. 
and I would see Tom around, and we would skate with Tom. But he was hurt all the time. He had a knee thing. Yeah, right? he's, I think he's yeah. mangled his I don't knee think at the he's time. Ever really looked after himself that well, and his knees are fucked. Yeah, he so he wasn't really like he want. He was trying to skate, but he yeah. wasn't like, dude, you're you look like you're in so much pain, you know. You run into him anywhere randomly as well. Yeah, and he like, gets about, doesn't he? Like, Somebody said he they saw him at Glastonbury. He'd gone to see. He went to see Wu Tang. Yeah. Just turned up and was like, and we, oh, well, he just penny. he just went to he just <laughs> went to Margate just to yeah. see Jagger That's from right, Supreme. Yeah. And it's like the thing with Tom is it's like the, the reason he's so good. If there's a crew or not, if there's a filmer or not, a photographer or not, he will just go thing. skate. Yeah, yeah. Like on that on that Super Tour, like everyone woke up and we were like, "Where's Tom?" Mm. And we like looked out the balcony and he's just like walking in his baggy clothes. So he's got the distinct like, <laughs> yeah, distinguished yeah, yeah. walk and he just goes yeah. to Erbis. Mm. And he's just flipping in and out of grinds and stuff. Yeah. Like the dude just skates. He's just to been skate. inducted into the skateboarding hall of fame as well in the last week. Le oh, really? They yeah. they're oh sick. Yeah. Oh, of course, yeah. It's about time. Yeah. Is that right? Google that, or is it the UK one? I can't remember. I because I usually get those emails yeah, for the was, US one. Steve yeah. Douglas said something about it. Oh, maybe like, it oh, isn't must... Steve. Man, yeah. Yeah. maybe I'm I don't sure know. I mean, of course. I mean, he. I mean for. The amount of time that it took him to become what he is was like a 95. Like what year was like there was like a four year period of where he did everything that people were like still looking at now. And in that yeah. and it seems like it was forever, but it was literally just like very. No, I mean, like I, I kind of saw it a bit because he was. He well, used you to go were at the comps with yeah, him. Yeah, at the, the Radlands. British I went there in 95. I was ninety. I was there ninety two, maybe ninety two, ninety three, ninety four, ninety five, ninety six. I was. And at, you saw him every year. Yeah. Come along and then oh, awesome. the com the contest at the Pioneer, which was the the indoor park at St Albans. Yeah. Just near London, and you know, he, he started off. It was this guy who was on New Deal flow, yeah. around the kind of twelve eighty one time. Yeah. Massive beanie, you know, huge clothing, baggy trousers, and then slowly, cut off orange slowly started like. You could see he was doing front side flips that were like coping level, but landing then pivoting. And then the next year, it was like I spoke about it on here before. The next year he was doing we, five forty. It was that. he was there with Manzuri at St Albans filming, and it was the first time uh, we were sat on top of the the quarter pipe as you go into the park. Yeah, and it's maybe a six foot quarter pipe, and it's the first time I'd seen anyone do a kick flip and catch with their feet above Oof. the coping and yeah, he did it right in front of us and Manzuri's filming it for Sound of Vision like, and we just turned around to each other and we were like <laughs> it was like what the f like how has he done yeah. that and then that was it it was like and then He's, it was Radlands yeah and that's then, what I mean a couple and, of years of Radlands yeah. and then he just went from Radlands to just and then they went to America and then that was it yeah the amount of time people have probably had that yeah feeling watching him do I mean yeah. they say it all the time with that chain and the bank thing yeah. like Bowie's like, yeah. and yeah. they're like, just unreal, like oh my unbelievable God. I was just feeling him skate that road barrier yeah. and he just goes and goes and goes yeah and so about rare. the uh, Hall of Fame I got a thing from three days ago it says him Jeff Grosso Mike Carroll and oh, yeah. Rick Howard all inducted in the same. Oh, amazing! I didn't know the rest of them were. Yeah, yeah that's oh, what it says. I mean, every, all, every single Shredder one of those. News. Every single one of those deserves that. Yeah, hundred. But that's they, Radford, They've deserved it years, yeah, yeah. years before. Yeah. No, Tom would do. He's skating a mini ramp in some video on the internet with like a little orange shirt on. He does like a. Uh, he was going up to back disaster, but he late shove it back lip slide. So that is the that's video a, that we put out. Snakes that's our video. roller snakes video, dude. From, that, is it 720 or 540? We've got the VHS over there, Sean. Yeah, that it's from that one. It's from this one. <laughs> yeah, I want to yeah, watch that. I want to. I don't. I've only seen so that it's like, clip. Yeah, and I'm like, I want. There's a whole mini. Part if we've got there. two copies of that, we have to. Yeah, I mean, we yeah, have dude, one, I, though. I, mean, I think it might be 720 yeah, that he's let's in. Let's see for the camera, dude. Yeah, that one's 540. I don't know. I think it's the next one. I think it's 720. So that ramp you're talking about was the Oxford Wheels project where Sean Goff and the SS20 skate shop guys, they they got that ramp sorted and it was a mini ramp and then it had a vert section. And so Dude, the trick you're talking about, I think is where it, it looks like he's going to do a backside ollie. Late shove. Late shove it, disaster, lip. revert. We lips, he like slides yeah. it, I think. Yeah? yeah. I don't know anything about what's going on there. Is that the one in the park? Yeah, it's, it's just in a random a, park. Yeah, I know yeah. the footage. I think that's 720. He okay, has like a so little, he's a little kid, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, and what's that? In the same, trousers. in the I think same I've got part. the footage on my computer. Yeah. Yeah. I'm honest. In the same part, <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> he, with with him doing all that kind of mad tech stuff, he then goes onto the vert section and he's doing 
doing oh, 360 man. nose bones to fake it yeah, with 48 mil wheels. It's like, it just shows you that Penny was, it was something else. No. It was just like... Well, we talk about that iconic photo of the <coughs> flip fake on Vert, the flip... Um, the flip indie that Horsley. Flip indie that Horsley Yeah, shot. on the Cheech and Chong board. And Ho like, Unreal. I've spoke to Horsley and he's just like, yeah, he just said he wanted to do it. Yeah. And he just did it and the dude doesn't yeah. skate Vert. Well, I seen him, I, I was at Radlands in 95 for that yeah. contest. So I seen him skate the Vert ramp like randomly. Ramp. And I, the only, Fucking like mental. I, I seen McCrank do similar thing, like switch any, mm -hmm. switch flip any fakies as well yeah, like that. Yeah. And I'm just like, these, both of these dudes have whatever else, that, yeah. yeah, whatever that is they have. Like mm. a lot of people are looking I always for. remember bumping into McCrank in, it would have been Lausanne. Probably, what year were you in Radlands? 95, did you say? Yeah. Did you then go on to the Switzerland? The only time I went to Switzerland, well, I went a couple of times, but we had that Grand Prix. Yeah, I think it was then. And we were yeah. skating this random mini ramp in an indoor park, and McCrank just showed up. And it was it was when he was still riding for the Canadian company. What was it? Cherry Bombs? Cherry Bombs. Yeah. Nice. Oh, that's, so he that's, was, that's before he went. Great. Yeah. That, so, I think that you might have caught him right at the tip of him just sailing. So he was skating this mini ramp, yeah. And we were there and it was it was really it was like a vert transition for a mini ramp. So it was yeah. really, you know, like hard to skate. Mm. And he just dropped he got there and I yeah. don't think he'd ever skated before and he dropped in and he was doing like I mean I remember it being head high. Probably was. Front side Ollie's just dunk. Yeah, yeah. Dunk. No, he's like so that. Good. And he's it was so just good. like and we were like, Who the fuck is this? Mm. You know, and then it you know, and he then you start seeing him in four on one. Well, and, and then Medic Mowdy came out. Yeah, and, and it's just like, like, whoa, like, oh shit. God, yeah. yeah. No, I see him uh, I see him skating all the time in uh, Vancouver at the place with the curb thing we it's a tennis oh, right, court yeah. that we can mm. you know, he's skates there. Yeah. Talk, yeah, McCrank's a legend, isn't he? Talking okay, about so Vancouver, good. one of my <coughs> questions on here was have you ever been skating around in the evening? And seeing the elusive barrier court, because I know they're they're Vancouver. They they skate the they skate the undercover DIY a lot. Yeah, that's and there's where some absolute shredders. That skate that's where I court. seen them skating the barrier in the back. Yeah, the, yeah. This one. Yeah. They don't. Yeah, yeah. They never skate in inside. Yeah, it's they always skate. out. Yeah, yeah. yeah they. I've seen them skate there. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, I don't know how the some of those barriers. Actually, there's a barrier in. The the there's a barrier on the outside and there's a barrier like right on the tip of where you go out so it's mm -hmm. like really this little section. Uh, there's, is, it, is the one that's kind of curved round as well? There's uh, the one I saw him skating was like against the wall and it kind of went down like it was like a kind of down. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's another one that's like inside the park but just on the edge and that one has like you know, it's skatable for people, but then there's some of the ones around Vancouver that mm. I've tried to skate that they've skated are insane. Like, like no, no concrete on it. Like, yeah, basically like, a wall ride to the like, one he, they, they skated the, there was one, I can there's a <clears throat> Camby downtown at the Camby parking lot. They had like a little, I think it was their first video. Yeah. I've the got horde video where it, he was doing like 360, Backside 360 backside kick, 360, yeah, yeah, whatever he was in, that was insane. Like he did backside air on it, like. What was it backside 360 kickflip? I don't know. I can't remember I think what that it was. Was in the creature horde video. I could have been there too, yeah. but it, yellow that, barrier. Yeah, that yellow barrier was that the ritual barrier? That, I don't know. I can't. Uh, all of those fuckers have ritual barriers. It's too yeah, hard. Yeah, yeah. No, that, I like don't know how he did some of those things. Like I said, seeing seeing when he came here and I took him to like, I almost took. That while I was taking Deer Man to like just some raw, unconcreted barriers. Yeah, I know. And he like, he'd kind of get there and I'd just be like, do you think yeah, then? No, no, he's, and he yeah. just goes for it. And I don't, I don't know how someone can get up. Because at like, the bottom before even the, in the English really barriers, small. English flat. Yeah, you've got that yeah. chunk but at the just, bottom, isn't there? He just there? goes and then, up and, and rocks them like four wheels up, four <laughs> wheels in. It's insane. I don't know if his board has a little nose on it though, does it? He said a it was a like copy that. with a with a much shorter nose on it so he can so he can violently stab <laughs> an abrupt <laughs> hellish transition. <laughs> Dude, I fucking I live I love Deer Man man. He's, he's violently sick. stab. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on a sec. We need to talk about who's sponsoring this episode of the podcast, the podcast that you are enjoying listening to right now. Toby, who's sponsoring this episode? Today's sponsor is Camp Rubicon Skate Camps, which have been around since 2006. They are active for eight weeks a year. 
So you need to get in where you can. Campers have been traveling from all around the globe for almost a decade for the ultimate skateboarding holiday camp experience. And this year, they will see the campers head over to Europe to have a little skate in Barcelona. Barcelona. And even the Netherlands for about a week. Barcelona. Say it. Barcelona. Barcelona. Guests in the past have included the likes of Chris Vile, Paul Regan, Tommy Corbridge, Alex Acuna, Adam Keats, Aaron Jago. They've also had veterans like Andy Scott. My homie Nicky Howes and Craig Smedley. Craig. Included in the camp is accommodation, travel, food and entry fees to any parks. So whilst you're at Camp Rubicon, they also aim to skate two parks a day, which means 10 parks a week. That also includes some of the most famous and popular indoor and outdoor skate parks known to man. So overall, it just sounds like a sick week where you can skate with some incredible skateboarders and meet like-minded people. So to all the viewers and listeners out there that want to find out more information about Camp Rubicon, where can they search? CampRubicon.com, and that's Rubicon spelled R-U-B-I-C-O-N. They are also on Instagram at CampRubicon, and you can send them an email, info at CampRubicon.com. Did you know emails don't get wet like letters? I never it? knew that. Anyway. Are you on email? Back to the show. Are you on email? You simply have to be these days, don't you? That went. <laughs> that was so awkward. <laughs> we should probably let the listeners know about the Patreon that we're starting. Do you want to give them some information about that? Yes, I will. So from as little as £2 a month, you can become a Patreon member and get access to uncensored, uncut episodes, mm -hmm. behind the scenes shiz, bonus OG episodes. What does that mean, Ford? Like the episodes that we used to see where it was just me and Toby doing reviews, fan mail and anything else in between. And Toby's favourite, Stinker of the Week. Stinker of the Week is back, but only on Patreon episodes. Mm -hmm. You will also get outtakes, early access to new merch when it launches, mm -hmm. general skate nerdery, and much, 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 much more. <laughs> make sure you check out all the information in the description. Follow the links. Make sure you subscribe, become a member, and enjoy the rest of the episode. Bef before we go on, please feel free to have a liquid death. Oh. We're not... We're not sponsored by him, but I'm just saying, if Chris Haslam says you've got to sort us out, <laughs> liquid death, sort your shit out. Come on, feel free to have a drink at any, any time. But, um, um, but yeah, I'm guessing you would have run into them quite a lot then. Or Yeah, I have a lot. And uh, a couple of the other guys there too, mm -hmm. they around town. But I mean, I, you know, for me, nighttime is for sleeping. You know, I don't yeah. know. Those, <laughs> those guys go out in the middle of the night, like light up. Yeah, stuff light up a spot probably with fire or like a those candle videos, yeah. or something <laughs> like they i watched the first video i mean that they like had like, or Cand like yeah yeah candles at the each side they're burning their faces <laughs> on it it's like a proper ritual yeah there's what there's one clip of um i forget what his name is um but he like does a perfect backside 50, 50 back to fakie on a barrier depth leviathan dweller and it's on a pig pig board so it's super stubby depth leviathan and he's uh, in shorts depth leviathan dweller. dweller i think that's who that yeah. one is yeah <laughs> and it's just perfect back 50 50 back to fake you know we always talk about blender. the neil blender one at this at the street style is that called a certain death a certain death is that what it's called like yeah. if you stand up i think isn't that what it's called we yeah. stand up with a and then wanted. you like go in full pivot in from oh, a back yeah that. so you yeah, don't i mean it would be certain so you don't go up and slide in you go yeah, yeah. back Proper. up yeah. lock your trucks yeah. and you come back in almost like you're doing a i think i it. think i mean people on the internet will probably tell me not. i think that might be a call to certain I've, death i've not heard it called that but that makes sense doesn't I it? i think it's uh i think i don't know if you it counts if you go into it or if you just stand on it and go in right i think that might be called i don't but, know i could be wrong yeah, yeah. but this, ben, ben plum does all that doesn't he on the ramp he can yeah. he can oh, basically cool. go in and out of any kind of grind he looks like fake it reverse it's like on the front footage. the front side pivot to come in uh, sudden yeah. death sudden death sudden death, sudden death. Yeah. Yeah. right yeah, there okay. we go nice. close Almost yeah producer it. fraser it fucking would be on a barrier yeah, sudden me. death yeah the front side pivot stall and then pivot in with no slide like legit style that one yeah. like how penny used to do Shit. yeah he so you just like like that oh not even rolling stall matt mumford used to do them like yeah stand up a stall and then just go in front side like right. oh not like grinding front just side pivot to fakie but with your wheels not oh. sliding and you're yeah that scares the that. shit That's out of not... me yeah tom yeah. would i don't know tom just i seen there was another mini ramp sex he has his baggy ass windbreaker on he's just that's like, in prague at the old mini ramp thing yeah, he just looks like he was floating yeah yeah that was crazy yeah that those clips i mean i watched because that like, speaking of floating I, do you guys remember andrew langy i know the he used name. to write for flip yeah uh 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like you should he, do good on ramps. Good on ramps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, he's kind of a bigger dude, Islander guy, big guy. Uh, I seen him recently. Oh, not recently, a couple years ago. But he's like really tall and really big, and you don't if you just like look at him and see him. Yeah. Like if you got a skateboard out, you're like, man, this guy probably like hurts. But when I seen him skate these big quarter pipes and transition stuff, it had he had the same like it Flow. looked like he weighed nothing. Yeah. Like he was. And he was doing like, you know, switch front blunt, like all this stuff. And you're just like, oh my God. Some people just got that transition flow, haven't they? Like, it didn't matter how Andy much Scott you had weigh it as well. Or, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Hell. Yeah. Well, we it's were talking like, about like, it. Proper like ninjas, they can just do it all. It's like, well, we seamless. were talking about it a while ago. Like, I love skating ramp, but I don't have, my legs are heavy. I don't have the ramp yeah. legs. To oh, flow. heavy legs. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, like, that's that's what that's probably what it is. Like Aunt yeah. Langy probably had that. Mm-hmm. Langy has that, and Tom definitely just melts into the ramp, and you don't even. Yeah, he does no friction at all. Mm-hmm. I mean, Tom grew up in that uh, in Oxford, where Sean Goff and a lot of the mini ramp guys, that's and right. guys, that's were, so so sick. He would be skating, with, and with Ali, Ali Carnes as well. He yeah, Ali Carnes and Avi yeah, as well. So they all. they all. Knew each we other. just had him on, Ali Khan's. Yeah, awesome. he was our last. Was he our last episode? He was that our just last came record. Out? Yeah. The last one that released. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah last Ali one. Khan's. Sweet, yeah. yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's doing well. super rad. Incredible vert skateboarder. Yeah, yeah. Is is um, you said Andy Scott. Is he the one that did the kickflip eggplant? Yeah, the scrambled egg. Yeah, yeah. that's what this. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I remember. I think what I was it. The, what skate park was that shot in? That was oh fuck. Um. I feel like I was. I've been to that park. I, I think it was. Oh, I don't know because it. I remember him doing that sequence, and I was like, "Oh man, that sounds like a." I was trying to think what it was. I want to say scrambled. Manchester. Produce the phrase that you want it. I'm trying. Andy Scott scrambled egg. I don't even think it was. Thinking the kickflip egg is called the scrambled egg. Yeah, makes All sense right. though, right? Well, because <laughs> there's a few. There's the uh, the scrambled egg. There's the. Uh, What's the eggplant 540? Fuck nice. McEgg. Oh, there's a McEgg. That's, kind, the that's Mc, kind of Sean's the, This territory. is Sean's territory. Oh, what is it called? But there's all these, like, yeah. just, you might as well start a restaurant or something. Dude. <coughs> yeah, just, well, I have, the a, I have a McEgg once a week from McDonald's. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I wish it was that easy to do those, you know? Yeah, do we want to talk any more about hometown, well, about Canadian skateboarding? I know there's a lot there, but we could be there for a no, nah, I mean, nah, let's let's move on to. Um, There's a lot of what, Canadian skaters. What yeah. about what about Chris's favorite Canadian skater? Yeah, who who you? I mean, who, we've got a great board of a Canadian skateboarder behind us. Right here, Sandy Anderson right piece there. there. New shape, even no. Yeah. yeah, he's yeah. another one that's on that creative spectrum. That is anyone yeah. going to top what he's doing? I mean, he is a he's got a good he like he has a mix of a lot of things, like especially yeah. with the. That whole freestyle side of them, mm-hmm. like to have, to have that little like flat ground freestyle side and the whatever the twenty seven stair Smith grind but side. You kind He's of got it all, isn't he? Well, that's what I mean. Together, that, doesn't it? That's what I mean. There's not many people that have that balance of the freestyle world and use it in a way that they can do it on a handrail and stuff like that. Yeah, he he's got really good front side flips like, as well. He's yeah, got the flip, isn't he? And, yeah, doesn't what's he do balance? feeble grind front foot impossible was that? I'm sure. Oh, probably, I mean. Those, but. Back feeble? I think so, yeah. I'm sure he's back, back feeble, feeble front, front side front, front, front front foot, foot impossible, impossible to fakey. Yeah, I've done that. That was the one I in. You've uh, done that, haven't you? Yeah, that was in. Uh, Maybe that's what I'm thinking. Of. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sure he did filmed, it. Filmed, filmed fish eye. Both fish eye um, and long. Yeah, in, in uh, uh, Madrid. Was it, in, was it in five inch? Yeah, that's it. I've got that down. So you got to sign it for me before we go. All right. I don't care. He's signing it. <laughs> <laughs> that's five inches from the curb, not of you know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't find where that Andy Scott trick was filmed, but it's in Spirit of the Blitz. Death no, Box, no, that's the Spirit of the Blitz was the first Death Box video. We're talking later. This is when Sunday Andy, service. It was in. Was it in was it the in contents the page? Of, no, it was yeah, in the contents sequence. page yeah. of Thrasher. Yeah, I remember looking at it and being like, "Whoa!" He's riding was... a green board. It's it's an indoor vert ramp. I went there. I don't even know where it is. Like, what? Let's get into um, your first sponsors and like, how did it first start kicking off? My yeah. first sponsor was a shop sponsor in Vancouver called the Boarding House. Is that still there? No. Oh, they, like, they got broken into like 
multiple times in like mm-hmm. one or two years and they're just like dude yeah fuck yeah, this. yeah. <laughs> Duh. but it was there for years man it was there for a yeah. long time uh the school skates is the longest standing oh yeah what are they 70 78 or something yeah, or? something insane old as me 45 years well how pd like yeah i don't know yeah. he's been running skull and pd's hot mm. shop for a long time huh? yeah, yeah. That logo is iconic, isn't it? Skull Skates logo. Mm-hmm. It was so simple, but yeah. you, you yeah. like look at you, it. You know so what it is. Sick. Yeah. But yeah, so your first sponsor. My first sponsor, my f- flow sponsor was, um, I remember in that video, Vancouver 2000. Uh, it was a Slam City Jam Vancouver 2000 video. I think I've got that. I did a switch backside 5 0 on this bump to rail that was at a park i skid it was muska had a barbecue there right did he uh, have his uh boom box yeah but i think i think usually had it at a different park and i think that year something happened at that so he brought it to the park that i always skated at and i was i was just skating around doing my thing there yeah. and i uh like i guess i was skating okay because the um the distributor there hit me up and was like would you want some action shoes yeah so i was like i got my uh first I got like three pairs of actions like you the like, next day. You're and like, I, I've made it. Well, yeah, I did. And then I like parked my car, left it in my car, and then I woke up in the morning and some bastard stole, Sorry. broke into my car and stole them all. Sounds <laughs> like Canada's got a lot of breaking, breaking yeah. and entering situations. Yeah, they stole them all. And then I had to go back and ask for more. That's a new one. Did, <laughs> was there a moment where you looked at them and you were like bummed out, but you were like, nah, I'm sponsored. Just, no, <laughs> never, never. I, I don't even do that to this day. Well, yeah. maybe now i know a guy that makes boards that i just keep myself that i can i have to make my own board company to be pro still but um you can be pro for baghead crew <laughs> yeah do it that'd be fucking can, can you be the first pro to ride to my clothing company <laughs> clothing bag <Baghead> <coughs> we do it i'll send i'll send you clothing once every six months <laughs> you get one t-shirt <laughs> yeah so, so we we did the, i did the action shoes for flow for a little bit and then uh you know, danced around some like distributor stuff in Canada with like yeah. World Industries and DC Shoes, and it was on RDS for the first video for a like hot second. And then Red I, Dragons. And then I kind of left that, and then uh, I was um, going to university, at, yeah, University of British Columbia for there for a minute, and like I couldn't. I started making videos to send down to sponsors in LA and stuff, and nothing was biting, and then. Uh, I was like, screw it, and then 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 I uh, the the same because there was multiple distribution companies there, mm. and uh, the one guy that gave me the action shoes was different than the World DC guys at the time. So I'd already left Action there, and I was getting DC, and then this dude was like, "You can just leave. I'll get you whatever you, whatever we distribute. I'll send your video right to the place, but you just like." I wasn't on RDS anymore, and it was very, it was very like, um, you know, RDS and like World Histories and uh, DC. They, they call them McKay's, and <clears throat> so they had all the ties to pull with all the. If you're in the whole thing, but I, I was kind of always like an outsider to a lot of the things I was doing. So, um, I was like, all right, well, I left those, and I was. Like, that's when I was like, well, this. Is, I was a short-lived career as skating. I'll have to pay for things the rest of my life now. Yeah. And uh, he sent my video down to uh, dwind- like Dwindle. Yeah. And uh, I remember uh, on the Nine Club, I, they were, I wasn't sure what happened of how my video... I thought my... I thought it went pretty like handoff here well okay cool fly day one day one was like come on down whatever i thought it was that simple but it was total luck of the draw what happened mm-hmm. because my friend um sock who filmed like socrates leo yeah, filmed yeah. like yeah mm-hmm. big videos in the 90s videos, and stuff. like yeah. yeah all those yeah. cool ones someone that one of his buddies worked in the warehouse at the time because mm-hmm. deca was filmed in the warehouse at yeah. the back yeah and he they were moving uh warehouses to where uh the at the time the globe acquired them and they moved into mm. with globe over there uh no longer with globe but they um the guy was helping like in the back clean up but he went to get some food in the front in the cafeteria and there was videos sponsor me videos just piled in the cafeteria anyway. 
and uh, I guess he said he was eating his thing. He's like, fuck it, I'm, you know, like, oh, he's this weirdo. And he put, <laughs> <laughs> he chose. Yo, one. Yeah, mine. Put it in and uh, was watching it while he ate. And because Daywan was skating the back, Daywan came in All to right. get a drink or That's something. Right. Holy shit. And the guy was like, hey, Daywan, check this out. And it was me doing like, I don't know, kick the back lip, kick the bout or whatever yeah. in Canada. And <laughs> that's how it so oh, the total, total yeah. like luck. Yeah. I mean, if that's exactly if that's how it went, I was like, man, made me question my whole <laughs> <laughs> What a what a person to walk in and see his fonts. Well, I mean, it was one. it was just if you know, <clears throat> if what dwindle didn't move, if if like, you know, dwindle hadn't been moving. There would be no warehouse to skate in. Day one wouldn't have been there. My video would have just been in the pile. Yeah. Uh, like, Crail Tap moved. Uh, girl moved from, uh, like, Vermont to, like, the in California, Tor Torrance or whatever. They were yeah. on Vermont Avenue, and they moved to, like, um, closer in towards Torrance. But me and Day one would skate in there. This is, like, fast forward 12 years. They were moving all their stuff out to the new warehouse, and somebody comes in and was like, is this yours? And it was my sponsor me video no that they didn't respond to me with. Bastards. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's mine. <laughs> Thanks for responding, you dickheads. Yeah. Can I have it back? Yeah, I think they gave it me back. Yeah, yeah. But but it was just like, you know, so my videos made it. They just never. And I can't, that was just me. Like, there's millions of people that sent those things yeah. in, it's kind of I mean? different for kids now isn't it because instagram is kind of their sponsor tape well yeah and it's always there so yeah. everyone can see it but if, if you don't have instagram or whatever you like what are you gonna do you have to yeah. like if you don't send your no one's gonna see you mm. yeah this weird like myth that happens in your town mm -hmm. but yeah. I guess yeah that's one good thing about social media is is the the ability to actually see you know give these kids opportunities that are like in small towns yeah yeah, yeah. but you know when you start having to pay you know people paying for you to film social media clips it starts yeah, getting a little exhausting a mm. that gets a bit unfun doesn't it so um did did you say day one called you up it was uh vince i i can't remember who actually called me to go down i think the guy, the brand manager at the time, Vince Krause, called the guy, the distributor guy in Canada that sent my video down, Kelly. Uh, I think he, they organized it, and I went down, and I saw day one uh, when the guy picked me up from the airport and drove me, because I drove from the airport straight to the warehouse. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I don't know what they were doing. I think they were skating the flat gap that the on the... Like day one was doing crazy shit on the forklift with the. So is this the stuff from the Deca, Deca video? video? Yeah. So I I literally went from the airport into that that scene. So that was the Deca warehouse. Yeah. yeah. Into seeing day one. Scale that was the forklift. Dwindle warehouse. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then straight into watching like day one and, you know, I can't remember who else was there. Maybe Shiloh was there one a few day, a couple mm -hmm. days, and uh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe uh, John Fitzamani was there, the guy that uh, one of day one super good. At friends uh he's been filming and shooting day one for years he was in there so i walked in straight into that and started just skating the and i think the first day in the deck of video i was wearing like a baby blue fury t-shirt that was my first day there and i think i did like a front what did i do uh i can't remember F fakey flip tail slide across this like we put a ledge on it then I yeah, yeah. Tail slid. and then i did another trick can't remember what the hell that was but yeah that video was mad it was like that was the first forklift truck lifting the ledge up between yeah. The, the yeah that's what i walked in on day one yeah there. it's like rattling was that the first time you'd seen day one skate in real life yeah that's the first time i did but well, i hadn't seen the only other time i'd seen pro skate uh was at radlands and the first dudes I met were Ray Barbie and Steve Caballero on the street outside. Rad. Yeah, yeah. And then when I went in, I was like, I mean, I was at a level in Singapore where I was like, because I, I moved to Singapore when I was when 91. I was at a level there where I was like, okay, I'm okay. I'm, okay. I'm pretty good considering I'm Sing like in Singapore. And yeah, yeah. But when I, when, I, when I went to Radlands, I was like, oh, my God, what the hell? I remember, yeah. the, I think that was the same year, Ray Barbie was skating the mini ramp. Dude, Gershon, was, Tony oh, Hawk was doing oh, 540s wow. on the mini ramp. You yeah, guys remember yeah, that? Yeah, that was the year I was there. So that was 94. 
So that mini ramp is five foot high, and Tony it was Hawk there. Is. It was there. Uh, so then I must have I must have skated there as well in '94 yeah. because I went to I was Europe '95 as well because I watched mm. Tom doing all the. '94 was Mike Santa Rosa, wasn't it? Fuck, I thought it was earlier than that. Mike Santa Rosa won the '94. Maybe it was '94, yeah. Because it was come on Eileen. Flip over the, the pyramid, didn't it? It was come on Eileen. He was yeah. like yeah, tray yeah, flipping like, the rolling. I I so. loved that song and I loved how. Uh, Mike skated uh, in that, and he was just killed it. So uh, consistent, wasn't it? Yeah, and so then I, I, we went. We were in Northampton at, uh, for Europe '95, and then I, yeah, I met Tony. I met uh, Ray and uh, uh, Steve, and then I went in, and I was like, oh my god, Kareem Campbell, Drake yeah. Jones, oh, yeah. like you know, Jamie Thomas, Ed Templeton, impossible tail grab over the, and then Tom Penny doing all this like. What the I always f- remember turning Rochelle. up for the practice day and. Um, like obviously we were kids and it was like holy shit americans are in town turning up and templeton was there and they just built that really tall ledge on top of the driveway yeah, and it was like you know like fresh plywood not mm. been waxed and templeton just gets there rolls around and then he's straight in nose bunt sliding across the top of it and it was a big ledge to get on top of mm. no wax and like we were all just like what the fuck because we come from waxing the shit out yeah, of stuff yeah, to get yeah. it to go you know how and he's insane. doing it with no wax. How insane is it that no one in the UK wants to go to Northampton, but there was a time when every fucking professional oh skateboarder God. ended up there. It, there like, like, of Northampton of all places. Yeah. There's wow. nothing there. Wait, and, but and Radlands. There was like the street outside yeah. where everyone would be in their cars camping. There's the school behind it where you just go and camp. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm talking story, camp. Yeah. I'm just like, you get a sleeping bag and you get under a tree and you shut up and go to sleep. Yeah. And then you're, you're there the next day and like... The yeah, rest- it's like when when I saw Sean Sheffy went to that nightclub, and, and he, he saw went, us. You dirty dog. He, no, he saw us like, and obviously we were geeking out like fucking oh Sean Sheffy. Hmm. He turns around and he's like, "Hey, you dirty fucks." Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, like, yeah. yeah, nice. The rad thing at the moment is oh, the the OG dude that owned Radlands. His son now comes here to skate. Yeah. That's and he awesome. brings OG. I've got OG Radlands stickers. Yeah. You know, from like that's that he's amazing. just got stacks of. Yeah, I mean, and, and then also the Radlands thing has spawned Dadlands. In the UK, which is an Instagram, is, well, it's worldwide now. Which is all the dads that skate curves, and they have dad of the year. <laughs> you know, Toby won dad of the year. Oh, there we go. There we go. Last year, 2022, I think it was. Yeah, I took yeah. the photo you with the dad of the year yeah. hammer. Um, so it's like this whole subculture of dads who like you get an hour on Sunday morning while the kids are like gone shopping with yeah, their mums, yeah, yeah. going skate the slappy yeah, curve, like and it's magazines, so rad. Everything. So rad. Sick. Um, who was the guy who won at the first dad of the year? The Australian guy. But it's also actually the drone for yeah, the yeah like Bones Brigade, yeah. but groaning because this... you, you're injured all the time. <laughs> Horsley, yeah. yeah Andy Sidewalk Horsley, Horsley from yeah. Sidewalk Mag. He does Groans Brigade. Oh, yeah, you must I have met Horsley back yeah, in the day. He lives in Nottingham, just down the road. I think I met him before, You, yeah. you must have done that him. name for sure. You yeah. would have met him and Ben Powell or someone yeah, at that time. Yeah, yeah. Ben, ben Powell. Powell yeah. Legends. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. We want to get him on the show. He's a teacher. He's a little bit scared about coming Yeah, obviously the the things we want to hear and ask him about might not be uh, suitable for his students. Um, Let's go back to Decker. So obviously... Sorry. (laughs) This is just random um, because you said Slam City Jam. Yeah. Before we leave, do you remember a song called Rene Rene? Yeah, I know Rene. I saw him like a couple, like last two months ago. So I went into a skate shop when I was a kid and the guy behind the counter was like, check this Slam City Uncensored. And it's got Rene Rene on the cover, missing tooth, like multicolored. Yeah, yeah. And it starts off where he's like skating down the street and he goes to the mini ramp and he's like, I'm doing frontside five volts. And oh, then I hit my head and I black out. And he, he goes all dizzy and wakes up. And then this character called Rene Rene comes in in all gold chains and he's like, mm-hmm. the sex is hot. And he's rapping yeah, at yeah. Slam City <laughs> Jam and Sense and there's mm-hmm. like tits everywhere. And I'm like, who is Rene Rene? Yeah. And I've never been able to find that DVD again, but I got given it by the dudes at Casino Skate Shop. Were you at the Slam City Jam when Burnquist first appeared on the scene? Just random. And you know, everyone was like, holy shit. It was 96, maybe? No. I was, uh, I was probably 2000, 2001. Two, probably from 2001, uh, I got to skate it. And then I think 2006, it was in Calgary, and then it died. Yeah. But I was, from two, I was there when... Uh, they had that huge rainbow rail and Mark Gonzalez mm-hmm. was like lips people grinding it and stuff. And like Josh Evan was like doing crazy yeah. neck high, like whatever the hell he was doing. It, I think, um, yeah, I did watch Bill Weiss nude five on the vert ramp. 
Oh, amazing. You know, I've seen that, which is yeah. good. Nutsack <laughs> looked like an ostrich head when it was playing out there. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was uh, Ryan Johnson, all these. That was so sick. Renee and, and uh, a couple people, are, are they started a little contest there now, too. I just love that guy. Like, I remember seeing that video and being like, fucking hell, this is like the most random dude yeah. that's just like bling blinged out everywhere. I think he had a clip in Alex Chalmers' part in the flip video. In the video. flip video. Um, I can't flip. remember what it was, but it comes Ollie, up really qu quick Ollie on the back screen. back foot kick flip out of the bowl. It comes up like really quick the... on screen. I think he's in like a shopping trolley and it says that was Rene Rene. He does like a, uh, so I think sick. it's an Ollie late flip out of the top part of Griffin Bowl. That's the filmed fisheye as well. I'm I can't sure. remember. I remember yeah. seeing it because I was like, oh man, there it is. But yeah, I mean, he used to do 360 Christ airs out of the bowl. Yeah. Like this like, dude is sick. This dude's so random, but yeah. so sick. And I, I just, I just heard of him because a dude at the council was just like, we just got a stack of these. We don't know what to do with them. It must have been an independent <laughs> feature from him and someone else. Probably. Well, he did make a music video, I think. Yeah, yeah Sex is Hot. <laughs> and he, he did a song with fucking one of the Blink... Mark, Mark, Marcus really? Hopper from Blink-182. Did you just get in the urge to do a 360 Christ there? Oh, man, I've got the urge to do one now. <laughs> like, you know what I feel like doing today? That's yeah. a skate three trick. Yeah. Sean, ben, sorry to interrupt. Sorry, can you do right. me a favour? Can you DM Ali and ask where Andy Scott did the scrambled egg? He's bothering me now. Munson's not calling back. <laughs> we, we need to. Yeah, just say. I could call him. Ali, how are you doing? Where are you going? I'm up in the middle of nowhere. See. <laughs> Ali, I, I'm here with Chris Haslam. Hey, there we go. <laughs> we've got we've got a question for you. Toby wants to know. You know, Andy Scott did the scrambled egg, the kickflip eggplant. Andy Scott. Yeah, but where was that sequence that was in Thrasher? What skate park was it? Um, the first time I saw him do it, we were at the YMCA. Right. Uh, down in Encinitas on that blue ramp when it was blue, the metal surface. But, but he had a sequence in Thrasher and it was a, in an indoor ramp. Can you remember? Uh, I don't know that I saw Fuck. that one. No one can remember where it is. We thought you'd know. <laughs> I don't know. Have you, got the, have you got the pictures or anything there? No, we're trying to find out now. It was, I'm sure it was contents page of Thrasher. We'll work it out. Yeah. No worries. Okay. Okay. No worries, dude. See you later. Cheers, dude. In the of <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See you later, Ali. Okay. See you in a bit. Up, See you Cheers. Later, Cheers, dude. It's like, who wants to be a millionaire? <laughs> right? That was Phone a lifeline. <laughs> right, oh, we only I'm have two lifelines left. We need to get Andy Scott on the show. I'm just trying to think who'd know, because but anyway, but right, he would know. let's go back. Let's, let's go back yeah, to Decker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, think, I hope he'd know. De let's go back to Decker then. So that warehouse forklift ledge, mm. like rigging up the spots. That you know, that's iconic of that time, isn't it? And and Decker as a brand, that's what everyone knows from that brand. Well, that, I mean, video that, and, that was all day one, and, yeah. and those dudes. Mm. That, I like was just, I was just like unreal for me to be there at that time. You know what yeah. I mean? So I was just well, along for the ride. How, how long was the process from you going down there that first time to Decker starting? Like, was Decker around at Decker was point? already there, yeah. 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 And then you were, like, down there. They told you you were going to be on Decker. And... I don't know if he even told me. I think it, I went down there, and I think, I don't know, I think we just vibed for super good, yeah. and that yeah. was it. Because the second day I was there, Rodney showed up and started giving me tensor trucks, and I don't know. I think maybe day one said something to Rodney or something, oh, but it was yeah. day one and then day two. And then I left like, I think like five days later and I had to go back to Vancouver and be like, what the fuck just happened? I yeah, love I doing this show, but I get jealous hearing these stories. Of, like, dude, imagine being somewhere and fucking Rodney Mullen. It was, it was is there. It, like, dude, it was, well, I told you it happened. So by like, yeah, I'm going to put this video on. Fuck it. And yeah, it was my yeah. video. It could put anybody's, there was, like a pile of it. I seen it. I go down yeah. there and I looked at it. It was like huge. Like I the, pulled them out and put them in. Like that scene in that cheesy film that came out in two thousand called Grind with like oh, yeah, yeah. Where, <laughs> he, where, he, where he's like, can you take my sponsor tape? And he goes, yeah, sure. And he like opens the um the tour bus and all the tapes fall out and he just goes, right, yeah, there dude. Yeah. There we go. Here oh, we, we, go. Got we got it. it. We got, got it. it. Haslam, uh, we've we got, got it. on that on sidewalk. Oh, it was in Sidewalk. Well, it was on Sidewalk I website. That, I don't know if it was posted wait, in Sidewalk. He did, yeah, he did it on the Sidewalk. No, yeah, that was it. 
What is that part? The, you know, that I, sidewalk. I can't find that's what part from it the is. sidewalk. That's side. no, that's from Fresher. That is Fresher text. Isn't yeah, it? but it's. Hang on, what does it say? You can't read that. Is it Wicked? No you shot it. Did Wicked? It says you got raspberry vodka instead of blueberry, and you're yelling at someone over it. <laughs> well, that's helpful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's the skate park that was, I've been to. That park. It's, I, I think it's Manchester. No, it's Blackpool. Blackpool. It's um. It's not fucking. Fuck. It's the Rock, one that Abby Rock, used to skate. Rock City. All the time. But is it Rock yeah. City in Blackpool? No, that's Hull, wasn't it? No, it's in Blackpool, right up. Bones. Skate. Oh, that's fuck. what I thought it was, but I don't know. It's the one that Big Woody Skate Shop was at. I don't know if it's still there. I'm gonna find it because I've got fucking footage of right, it. Hang there. on, we're going back. I'm talking to, about Decker. No, no, you go. <laughs> you go on to it. I'm gonna find. Um, how long? Like with the whole like. Decca, how many years was that? Were we talking before almost came along? No, it was Artifact was the next oh, one. Oh, Artifact. Fuck, I'd forgotten about that. Yeah. It was um well sneak preview happened. That that was the first kind of video they had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember that. Marcus killed that video that Marcus that uh, Here Brian. Comes the Boom song. Like yeah. Yeah. Pierce, oh, I love yeah. that, dude. He skates so fast. There was that one, and then the next one came out. I, I don't even know the whole timeline of Decca, but it, it wasn't long. It was like yeah. a year, maybe mm -hmm. even a little less or a little more. Was Decca before A Team or? No, I was. Well, no. I think Rodney might have been. Was he on this A Team happening? No, I don't. I don't. Remember. I think that was no, before. No, then. Rodney was on Enjoy. So A Team's already done. Yeah. Uh, Rodney's on Enjoy because Mark had started a, uh, Enjoy. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so Gershon probably, I think, was on Blind. Yeah. Was he not? Fuck, I don't know. Uh, and Chet had started Dark Star. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I tried to give Chet my video, and he said no when I was getting sponsored. <laughs> Chet? <laughs> you missed no, out. No, no. Well, yeah, I Chet, mean, Chet, like, I've spoke to Chet. Chet's cool. Everybody said no except for day one. Whatever that scenario have that everyone, was the only one but what that, a great scenario and yeah i mean everyone, i could not have many, asked for better 20 years of, was it about 20 years you got with dwindle was it? uh i had 20 yeah 20 yeah Maybe. everyone said no apart from the best skateboard well yeah, no but, that, that's right. what i mean i mean and it you know uh, clearly they had other things that they were they didn't know who i i, yeah, had, I was nobody i was just it, yeah. another guy whatever uh but you know i would not have if I could do it again the same way, I would have done it the same way yeah. exactly because, you know, you know, now Rodney and Day One are like, you know, super good homies of mine and like they influenced my skating in a way that not I don't think many people could have. Well, they were both very creative, doing their own thing kind of skaters. Yeah. And I think they probably saw that similar yeah, in you. You're very creative. And creative they were like, too. You fit in perfectly with that. I mean, I had the I had those doing weird tricks, but I didn't have I like I didn't know how to like do it i did i had the tricks but it was just me Facilitating. Some, yeah random yeah. guy doing weird ass tricks like dressed like some shaved head weirdo so did, did, they, did they guide you with that and how no i don't think they knew they were doing it but i was looking at them as uh and i would listen to mostly day one or mostly rodney because rodney just the way uh rodney talks about you know your your uh presentation to people in terms of yeah. what they see of you and your, your image and that stuff i don't i didn't think about that shit you know so listening to rodney do that is you know it changed the way that i um the things that i did the, the way that i filmed well, like not, your outlook on yeah the game. way that how my video parts look how mm. they are put together it yeah. changed all that stuff and then, i think i'd cry if i met rodney honestly <laughs> hand on heart like <laughs> you know if you just came in you're like hey guys i'd yeah. just be like It'd be like meeting the fucking god. No, he has a presence know? to him. Yeah, mm. I mean, he's he's so over here that when he does come, and I, I don't, it might be on purpose, but when he comes in, you're just like, oh my god. Yeah. But I mean, it turned so. And skating, obviously, his skating did it. But I only, the last time I had a real session with Rodney was it, when we were in the Deca warehouse. We had a. We, oh we, really? That long? Yeah. It, that like, long we haven't. Back. He's been hurt for. For a long. It's yeah, his hip, right? Or yeah. His knee? Even round three, he was like doing it probably well he was hurt and then after round three he was done till yeah i mean he you know done it till he's probably about like six months i don't know a couple months ago he's starting to he, he got like a total hip replacement mm -hmm. so he's like doing wow he's like gonna i hope to god it, he 
gets to skate out. the way that he wants to again because he's missed it for years. But because um, I heard that he'd, he'd done something so bad to one yeah. side of his hip that he was trying to learn everything switch. To it take was the pressure, uh, and he was trapping his hip under a car to like. Yeah, it was. Uh, I don't know if it was to. I mean, that's a good. I should ask him. I don't know if it was to relieve pressure on the other side or if it was his way of improving his uh, skating to a place that it has never been before because that's mm. you know that's what he's always done yeah and he couldn't do it with the with the 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 trick level in it because his body was hurting so it was a you know a conscious decision to be you know what i'm going to eliminate a stance like i'm going to mm. work so much on how my body moves to where there is no goofy or regular anymore yeah. and, and if anyone can do it it's or if you're Small. born with it, like scapegoat or whatever, he just has it, and which is you know, probably infuriating to you know <laughs> trying mm. to teach an old dog new tricks, you know, and then somebody gets born with just like I don't have a stance, I can do whatever. Yeah, um, he's insane that scapegoat. It's guy. well, that's that's something that is like one, like one out of every million people yeah. in skating like will have. Completely is, ambidextrous. Yeah, yeah. it's it's a that's insane. Yeah, um, but so I don't know it's, if it's it probably was, not a word for that. Because ambidextrous is your hands, isn't it? Oh, so like, there's no word for being able body. to, yeah, yeah, yeah. This dude should invent the word dude right can do now. Everything. It's like both stands. As close as we're gonna get to actually having an, an X man in the mm. in the real world. Yeah, stancy yeah. dexterous. I mean, I mean, there's there. I mean, it's possible to learn it. Mm. Mm -hmm. I mean, but if you you know you would been that's like Rodney was saying we've skated a certain way for like 20, 30 years. And like when you skate switch, you skate a certain way and it looks switch because yeah. it's because of the shoulders, yeah, isn't it? But and to yeah. eliminate that, to make it look when you've been doing it for 30 natural, years, yeah. it's almost impossible. It's like, yeah. dude, you feel so strange. Yeah. Uh, so there is a way you could do it if you're determined. And I mean, mm -hmm. Rodney obviously was because I mean, when he st when I heard him starting to do that, he, he did the, what do you do? Switch kick foot, one foot and nose manny. In mm. the, I think it was a Glow video, was it? And mm. he had like a, it was all uh, in like the warehouse. It wasn't and the opinion, light. was it? Globe's no, no, opinion. this was like a United by Fate video, oh, like okay. one of those ones. And he had like a real quick, yeah, like switch flip, switch one footed nose, Manny, in mm. there. But uh, yeah, it was like one of the first uh, pieces of footage I seen him when he was trying to eliminate it. And mm. I mean, it looked normal to me. Yeah. So it's doable, but I mean, you got to be. Yeah. ready to do it it's mm. almost not worth it <laughs> yeah and then and then day one side getting to skate with day one every single day i bet it was mind-blowing well, because it's, i mean it, it's it one thing seeing the video clips yeah I mean, but actually seeing that play out it can't it yeah it can't you can't like learn it from a video that no. it's just no. the energy that he has and like how he like <clears throat> does his stuff and like what he does and all this stuff it it, it you know that impacted me as well so the combination of those two and then you know people around i mean a lot of other pros were just killing it at the time as yeah, well and yeah. i would just do it and i was just in the right place for where i needed to be to yeah. like show it and then uh you know then round three came but artifact came i was still figuring the ropes out mm. and that lasted like six months or whatever the hell that lasted and then mm almost started and then we started filming for the video and there was a whole i had a whole collection of stuff that i you know was um ready to show people for the second time because of deca video was some other dude with a shaved head yeah and now yeah. i've got some complete very nice. canadian yeah, yeah. guy that has a little bit of self like identity to him and then the intro animations like the sasquatch thing is yeah it? And like, so oh, there was God. a little i had a little bit more of a marketing uh like thing that they could use see i wanted to I, I put this down as a question but we didn't want it to sound like offensive like do you think the hair and the beard completely changed people's perception well, uh, yeah, yeah it like, gave me it well because at the time too it was like because not taking away from your skateboarding ability because oh, i don't care like, whatever it doesn't but, matter whatever you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. like well of course because it, it, it at the time it set me apart from the random guy that was doing weird tech tricks or like and it at the time those like if you had like tight pants and whatever you're the rail and the gap guy yeah yeah the foundation usually like you're that. not doing weird one-footed nose manis and ledge tricks as a 
looking like a whatever you look like. So I think the me dressing the way that I did with the like with the hair and stuff, and I, I was doing a collection of tricks that were out of the ordinary for someone that looked like me to do them. And then it gave them, there was like, you know, from what I had before, there was something to hold there in terms mm, of marketability yeah. and stuff. So they went with the Sas because I had a beard and stuff so, and whatever. I mean, I mean, you were the Sasquatch in yeah. the skating shows. Right? <laughs> yeah. So I, it, I'm glad that came up because it was something I genuinely wanted to know. But, yeah. But I was like, oh, what if I ask him? And he's like, what are you saying? And I don't like, give a shit, dude. I, don't, I mean, I got I got here because of all that shit, you know. Yeah, I mean, every yeah. every step, Amazing. everything that's happened, every step that I've taken or opportunity that's come to me has led me to be where I am. Led you to the brain drain show. Right, brain, yeah, brain, yeah. There we go. There and we then go. Uh, so I mean, and I can't change what happened. So no. fuck no, it, no. man. It's like I'm gonna, I'll take the Sasquatch shit. I mean, I mean, did it go on for way long time? Like yeah, it did, but. <laughs> Who cares, man? Yeah. If that if that affected someone to where they remember who I was in my skating, then fuck it. Like, Did that ever become a nickname? Like you were skating a spot and a kid was like, the Sasquatch. I mean, it's happened a few times, but it, it never, it never, uh, He's never. You've never seen it in a mag, like the Sasquatch. Well, I have Ford actually. Ford would have been the kid at, yeah. when you came to the demo. Yeah. Sasquatch. Yeah. I, want yeah. a, I want a dead sweet so I would like, Yeah. Well, no, no, like, I've it's seen like, like, like mags, right? Like, you know, hairy, like hairy shit, like whatever, like, <laughs> hairy, like, uh, hairy Sasquatch shit. or what, whatever, like stuff about hairy guys and stuff. But it don't matter, man. Yeah. I like, no, nah. I don't mind it. It's, uh, I mean, it was. I was. I was like a hairy ass dude, and was surrounded by a bunch of kids. I couldn't grow any facial hair, so it made me Fuck, stand I out. I still can't. I'm 45, and I still can't grow a beard. <laughs> me neither, man. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Where, yeah. How did the beard come about? Like Ford mentioned, he'd heard a story. Maybe I, it was a bet. That it lost. was a bet. Was yeah. it? I heard this like when I was a teenager because I was looking it up. Like actually, the hair. Did, the hair was the bet. Cause right. I, th I must have been googling on like old slap forum, like connecting to my landline. Like, who is the hairy <laughs> man yeah, yeah, on yeah. almost? Yeah. It must Who's the hairy skateboarder? It must have just been some guy saying, "Dude, I heard it was a bet. He lost a bet not to cut his hair for a year." Is that no? It, uh, it was my yeah. It was my it wasn't my beer. My beer just came because it was like I'm lazy, whatever. But. My hair, I, I bet my, because I shaved my head for years, man. Because there like, is one clip in round three where you have got like shorter hair, completely like short hair, no face. I think the it's DECA escape, video but... and then the dig. Have you ever watched the digital, digital video? Yeah. yeah. That video has like four different versions of me in there. <laughs> that was like right in the middle of like uh, DECA artifact and the start of almost. Yeah. I had mm -hmm. all of them. Uh, and uh, it was a hair bet that i bet my buddy steve in in uh vancouver just to because i grow my hair he wouldn't, didn't believe me i could grow it and then i was like well guess Fuck what you, I'm growing <laughs> it. guess what i grew it what, what was, <laughs> was there anything to win there like i don't think it was i mean this is what I'm, I'm thinking such a about simple bet, isn't it? i, I think it's like a hundred bucks or something but i never like never cashed I, in on no it. i don't i don't i can't remember i'm a hundred dollars comes to mind but He'll probably tell me if he sees this, be like, you idiot, it was this. And I was like, oh, whatever. You idiot, it was $1,000 yeah, and yeah. you never cashed it in. Yeah, I know. So I didn't need it if I never cashed it in anyway, but because yeah. it gave me, it gave yeah. me a, something to the industry could at least like it or not cling on to. Wait, hold on a sec. Chill out. Don't tell me to chill out. All right, I'm sorry. We need to talk about this episode's uh, sponsor, which is? Which is Slow Gold Clothing Co. Take it away, Toby. So Slow Gold was started in 2018 by complete and utter legends, Stu Cantelow mm. and Laurie Sherman. The best thing about Slow Gold Clothing Co, in my opinion, is that it's actually designed by skateboarders, yep, yep. for skateboarders. The yep. quality is incredible. This is Millerane wax canvas, which means it's a little bit water resistant when you're out on your motorbike or skating home from the session. And there's a little bit of bad weather. Slow Gold also hook up a bunch of rippers. They we've do. Got, we've got Alex Halford, Jordan Thackeray, Sam Beckett, and everyone's favorite, Horsey, Slow Gold have very kindly given us a discount code for 20% off your order. 20%? 20. That, that's, that's a lot. Twice as many as 10. Yeah. If you enter Brain Drain 20 at checkout at slowgold.co.uk, you'll get 20% off your order and you get free shipping and you'll get stickers because they're skateboarders and everyone loves stickers, so they know you're going to love that it. That is true. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, these guys are rad. Thanks for the hookup and sponsoring the episode. Thank you very much. Should we go back to the episode now, Fordo? Yeah, let's go back to the episode in three, two, one. Your mum. Talk to us about... Well, I just wanted, just, just randomly came into my head. 
What's your opinion on how things have gone with Dwindle? Like it, it, it seemed like for someone who was with Dwindle for so long, yeah. Seeing it. That's why I've got the Sam Beckett board up. Seeing you know, it go to shit. shit. He's our boy. He it's, you know, like there was all these rumors the riders weren't getting paid for a long time. And yeah, well, that's that. a, but, I mean, I left in, so I left in 2016, but I left because cause it, at the time uh, I was, they were almost was doing a lot of collaboration stuff with like Hanna-Barbera and like uh, Marvel. I think it was, was Mar Ren DC. And, Ren and Stimpy ones. And Ren and all that shit. Yeah. I remember right. the DC one. The Ren yeah. and Stimpy was after me. But mine right. was uh, like Wonder Woman. And oh, like yeah. my, yeah, I think I my last one, my last. Willow had a board in that series. Yeah, Flash. Too. He had Flash yeah. and like everyone had one. But my last kind of time there was at the Hanna-Barbera, like wacky racer kind of realm. Hmm. And, it, you know, it had going on for like five years already. But we as a brand almost was like at the time before that was like we had we were basically the only ones doing uh technology in our boards at the time like yeah. the impact stuff, the impact stuff yeah. so we had that was like our major kind of this is why we're here because we have these boards mm -hmm. Rodney and the Uber boards. Were they the yeah. yeah Uber, I was gonna say feather line no that's the Uber. yeah yeah the Uber boards and then uh um we had the uh, impact boards like that the double it. impact all yeah. this stuff so that was like our thing and then we had you know our skating like me Day rodney mullen and we had day one song so we had like a we had something at, in a in a brand there that yeah. we could like stand alone with mm. and we had cheese and crackers happen and we had round three happen fucking great video thank you yeah we had uh we had so we had all that thing we had all these things to make us um be able to stand alone yeah uh and then we started i mean skaters got better mm. everything that they we could do in terms of skill set uh, these guys could everyone else could do and everyone and then as soon dwindle started putting tech boards in you know all these other brands like dark star yeah. enjoy mm. uh blind all these so say they getting their feather lights and they're getting mm -hmm. their uh whatever the um blind one was after Light or what, like re, whatever that whatever theirs I were. I remember the Uber boards because it seemed like it was a those ones are a Mullen. Those ones are thing. and those hap, those I think might still happen actually, but those are that was different. I never used one. Yeah, um, I've never used. I've, yeah, I've I never, never I never used them. But those were like his own thing. Like nobody got to just have those because I mean they made like four a day or something because of all the stuff they went in. But, high tech. but uh yeah, so I was going in, and then you know, pay started cutting, and this was before they sold or whatever. Mm. Pay started cutting, and then uh, which was around the time everyone was getting kind of like pay cuts at the time. So, and then I was like, well, why don't we? I'm trying to come in and help. Like, I feel like if we don't have these uh, collaborations, we have nothing as a brand anymore because we don't have the tech boards. We don't. Why would someone buy our brand? Almost when like they could just buy the Only same Dwindle board brands like yeah stuff, they have yeah. it in there whatever so i was like well we have to use it as like a it's giving a shelter now so we can fix what we have make a brand mm -hmm. identity out of almost now because it's so whatever uh and then so when these things go away and the numbers start going down if the phase goes away that we're doing collapse we'll have like a brand so we could stand alone and actually yeah. have something. And, you know, they just didn't, they weren't about it, I guess. I mean, I tried for like five years to, and I, again, I didn't have any answers for it. I mm. was like literally trying to just come in and be like, let's see what we can do. Yeah. But you had quite a prominent voice. I mean, I so thought so. I thought I, th well, I wanted to, because it's like, you know, we started it as a fucking thing and we want it. It's been like what 18 years or yeah, yeah. incredible, whatever, company. 16 years of, yeah. of, of my life and Daywan's life and Rodney's life and all like want to keep that thing around forever. We want that yeah. to be the last sponsor that we have, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I just, they, I didn't have any answers. I didn't have any like plan of attack on how to do it. So, you know, I, I don't want to sound like it was their fault or anything. Cause mm. I would have, if I, I could have brought the initiative and been, this is what we could have done, but mm. I didn't do that. And then I was just like, yeah, it's not going to, they were like, it's not going to happen. I was like, all right, well, fuck it. And so I left. And then uh, that was ex around the almost exact same time when Globe, well, like I was, the money for Globe started pounding. I didn't, I didn't re-sign with Globe. And then that mm -hmm. was off then too. So, When you were signing with Globe, was it like three or five year contracts? or? 
Uh, it was. I think it was like five. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes shorter. And then they were just like, we're not. Well, it, they they offered me again, but with a lower really money, lower yeah. uh, paycheck, you know. And I think they were going through a change as well, you know. Mm. So it was whatever. And uh, you know, there was some like, again, I just felt like I was just trapped in a room a little bit. But I'm super good homies with the Globe guys still. They're awesome, yeah. you know. I mean, and if it wasn't for them, I would not be living mm. the lifestyle I am right now. That's mm. for damn sure, you know. So if it weren't for them, you won't be on the brain drain show. Yeah. Uh, well, exactly. I mean, it, you know, it, <laughs> they they allowed me. <laughs> Those 10 years with Globe allowed me to do yeah. a lot of things, and so I appreciate that a lot yeah, from him. Like, and Rodney, you know, was probably had a huge hand in letting me be on Globe for 10 years, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, yeah. I don't know, sometimes I might be hard to deal with in terms of, like, I mean, I'm with my skating and stuff, like, when, when I feel like it's being abused, not abused, but, like, I'll be left alone to do my own stuff because mm. they, um, thinking is another Rodney influence because they trust me that I'll get what I need to do done mm. and not have to like the way that I want it to be shown. So that was always a, uh, I was always thankful for that too, because I stress out a lot when I film because I don't quality over quantity, that type of thing. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like, 100%. that's why Instagram's such a struggle for me too. But, um, no, but it, it was, it was all, you know, it's, it, it's business stuff man it's whatever it if you happens. if you can't separate yeah your skating your fun skating with the business of the industry then you're mm. messed already so i never had like you know i was i never had any sort of animosity towards anything i yeah, mean that's no just point. the way they chose to do it and it's, it's just fine. a chapter of your life and you yeah awesome. i mean yeah. i did the every these guys allowed me to do everything that ever you know video, yeah video they games that freedom of video games they they sent me around the world for years and yeah I'm like you know they allowed me to live this lifestyle you know so it's mm. like i can't be choked on can't them. be bitter about it yeah mm. i mean if i find a lot of guys will get bitter because they can't separate the two because you could yeah. be with a company for 20 years and you think you're homies with everyone even though you are but when the business it, yeah, side it's, goes yeah and, and you you're not make life yeah, decisions exactly yeah then you're like well you guys are assholes i did this and this and this and this for you and they're like well, well the, if the money's not yeah there, like, exactly and that's but, but you picked up a new sponsor today from oh there me, we go so yeah. i'll be i'll be sending you some i'll be sending you some, <laughs> sending you some stuff i've yeah. always been curious and you don't have to answer this question with when you're pro for a company like almost how many boards get sold a month and do oh, you man. are you are you in like savvy to that do they tell you how your board's selling or like how does it how does it work i never uh i never ask them but usually when your salary is uh when your salary is at a certain level your board sale royalties will have to meet that level and gotcha. anything after that is yeah. what you get so if, all right okay and i and if you're so if your salary is high like whatever some five grand a month you need and you know your royalties are probably like two dollars a board two dollars a board so if you sell more than five thousand dollars worth of royalties on the boards anything <laughs> after that you're gonna get that but so you gotta sell a lot of boards to yeah, yeah. dude like well, I, we I work in skate we know what the yeah, profit uh, yeah. margin i do are. not <laughs> i do i don't think i ever once saw any sort of royalty even i don't even think i saw it for shoes Mm -hmm. like i don't think not even be a pro shoe like no i mean i they were uh, i mean you know they would have to sell like so many shoes it's like four i think it was like four dollars a pair of shoes. It's pretty standard for mm -hmm. that but i wouldn't i didn't see any i mean i i did not rely on the unless you're like janowski yeah fucking hell what do you want like, royalties or like the whole uh, both I'm selling boards on like a bam level <laughs> Yeah, yeah okay. like 15 boards in the CCS catalog what, or something. What did, yeah. what did Muska sound like an epically later? Dude? Like at one point, it was like 50,000 boards. Oh, he's a month. Like a month. It was something, yeah. it was something ridiculous. Well, he's, he's, he's the silhouette Muska. Board. Yeah, he's yeah. the Muska, yeah. man. Like, imagine that. Like, and that's such a an, like one, I, it, one in a million kind of well, it's, scenario, it's the, isn't it? It's the Dave Mayhews, it's the Chet Ford, yeah. and it's the Muskas, it's the Pennies, it's the... You know, there's a couple of guys now that kind of have that like elusive thing mm. going on, like the mm. Way Disarmos, the you know, oh, like those, like the Tiagos, the Pirats. Oh, Wade is good, isn't he? Oh, he's a Canadian. He's still, he's still bringing out incredible quality content, like in, for primitive. 
you know, shit like that. It's insane. Did Obviously, you, um, like, before we jump back on, did you see Halford's biscuits and tea with Jordan Factor? Fact yeah, I, was, I, I did. He, uh, incre good, that incredible. he messaged me about doing that. Like, can, would it be okay? I was like, dude, I don't give a fuck, man. Like, yeah. Cause well, it is kind of inspired by that, I guess. Well, isn't it? That's the, that's the thing about it is like, I was like, dude, it regardless. I mean, we didn't, do teas and crackers so that it would do what it did. I mean, I mean that's amazing that what did what it did. I mean, mm -hmm. but now when people like make a mini ramp video, regardless of who <clears> does it, where it is, what you know, it it's always gonna have like that to be compared to, which is, I mean, it's kind of sick, but it kind of sucks too because then it like I don't want it to, you know, because it and Rob's and uh, no Alex's and uh, Jordan's could have been stood by itself you know what i mean like yeah, the yeah. tricks they were doing were insane you know uh me and sean are just about to embark on a little mini ramp edit where the the entirety of the background is going to be green screen and then we're going to have crazy visuals projected behind him while he's skating a mini ramp on the green screen so Dude. when it comes out kind of like slightly inspired by the you know the lance mountain yeah. burn part in the house yeah. where it's like a nightmare uh did you ever watch uh, Runa uh, on the uh, Chichikov video. I think so. Yeah, it, he skates vert. He skates vert with like a psychedelic fucking. Yeah, like a but this is what this is gonna be. It's gonna be full. Everything in the background is gonna be on green. Screen. Dude, I did a I did a um, demo on a mini ramp in Japan once for some like festival, and they had they had, it was on a stage, so like the. <clears throat> There's like a rapper guy that came out, but he came out with a wired mic and it went across the fucking board. And then we were had to skate. So I was skating all in over and trying to do tricks all in over the fucking wire. But the they had a light tracking on the no transition of the yeah. ramp and moving lights. So like the coping was like a hazard thing, but it was it was moving. Ideal for skateboarding. Oh my to focus god! It was insane. Like LED lights, like transfer. It was the all light on the lights. ramp. Yeah. So there, the, everything was there was moving graphics on the ramp, and oh the, my god! And that the guy. Me. It was at night, and the <clears throat> the it was and they there was a it tracked you when you went to. So there's like a little line that showed where you went, oh, shit. and then there's a guy that was like rapping who walked out, <laughs> and there was a fuck the cord went across the middle. Uh. So we we're like trying to skate. We we're like trying to like, it was like aneurysm and dude, you know. You're like, at that, at yeah, that point, nice. did you did, were you like fuck being a pro skater? Uh, no, kind of it was shit? it was hilarious because I was like, well, these are the tricks you're gonna get because That's like because it's a manage. cable in our yeah, this dude's obviously not like been in a skate event before. So. Yeah, yeah. No, it was fun. I just got that video back from my. Well, when we when we finish with Sean's, we'll send you the link to it. Yeah, it'll only be like it's not gonna be that long. It'll just be. Like, I mean, you'll see Sean skating in a bit. He's got oh, his own style of skating. <laughs> that's so. rad, yeah. Um, Let's jump on yeah, to sorry. Almost. This is, yeah, just going back to almost. Like, have you got any good Sheckler stories? Good Sheckler stories. I mean, when he was a little kid, he used to sleepwalk in the hotels. Yeah. And he'd like lock himself out of the hotel sometimes. Or... <laughs> well, they're knocking on the door whilst he's asleep. Well, they? like, he'd like walk out and like, be in his boxes out like on the isn't that when kids are overtired they tend to do that i think i think so but i mean he was like this was when he was in the hot, like heat of like you know w right when he was like little kid getting top placings and mm. all this yeah. stuff like just killing he it. he was on fire yeah and he so i mean he must have been like <clears throat> sensory overload the whole time mm, yeah. <laughs> i mean i mean he used we used to they used to go on trips and we all these other dudes would just go party and get wasted. And then me and I don't drink or anything, so I'd stay back. And Ryan would also stay back with me. So we would just... You ended up kind of parenting him a bit. Yeah, until <laughs> until he left and became an ultra celeb. And then, you know... Was that change when that happened? Was that kind of pretty quick? For him? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, no, not really. Because you, know you knew he was going to be... You knew he yeah. was going that way. He was going to... You know, it was just a... Probably it was just a matter of what decisions he made. You know, he was gonna go, even like what to what he is. Yeah, yeah. Because he was already like he was already going. It was like, pfft. yeah. He had all the steam behind him. He had like, yeah. I mean, he's probably sponsored by Red Bull for like twenty five years yeah, or something. Nice. They probably yeah, still think he still is, right? Yeah. 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 So I mean, he was already going. You knew he was going. He was one of those phenom like Nigel. Nigel was like this mm. twelve year old guy with dread. He was already going. 
yeah. you can tell you know they're there there's something else with them isn't there? yeah like you can tell that. so yeah, it's just a matter of like where they go yeah i mean because some dudes could literally lose their mind and not go anywhere but uh yeah it's had, not the lifestyle for some is it like no, that kind no, of being, had, uh, being thrown out and i mean you know going back to penny you know that's the whole reason he kind of disappeared to france went to it? live at his mom's place in france and well there's a bunch of guys that like you know as soon as they get a taste of the lifestyle it's just like oh my god skating's not the same anymore you mm. know what i mean like i can't yeah. do it can't turn up to a skate park without signing everything for everyone well it's just a matter of like even internal like in your brain you're like uh the perception that you have of other people's perception of you yeah in terms of how you're <laughs> skating and you're supposed to be at this level but you know, you're, you don't want to, you don't feel like you want to be skating at that level right now, but yeah. then they're going to ju- you know, it's all this weird yeah, stuff. Pure you expectation know? from the crowd when watching you. It I mean, hard. it's a, it comes with the territory if you choose. Do you think be, there's an element of like imposter syndrome? Oh yeah, yeah. completely. Yeah. Well, it, it's like, well, especially if you have, like if you're a huge pro and you leave and you try to come back, mm. I can't imagine the level of like that t- sort of thing because you're gonna have people staring that's why everyone <clears throat> skates like probably stupid early in the morning or like late at night so that no one's around i don't know so i, I think there is a lot like a lot to do with imposter syndrome for sure yeah well because I mean, they're all we're all just kids dude we're, we're be skating for decades and yeah yeah like especially a lot, a lot of these kids get picked up when they're 12 and 13 and then they just mm. get shoved into the mm. so when they get into like their 30s or 20s or 30s they're going to be like oh, if i don't have skating what the hell am i going to do like so i have to have to be this person when you know inside mm. they might not be as confident or whatever yeah i don't know it's not for everyone i guess is it no but it's not but that's <laughs> fair enough i mean yeah yeah 100 you know, percent. everyone's different aren't they you gotta like if you choose the lifestyle though you gotta you know that this is what comes with it comes and with you know and you can abuse it or you can you know cherish it or whatever i mean i know mm. guys have done all of it so mm. i mean it's amazing being able to be in a position where you can influence somebody across the planet that you don't even know you've never met and they like yeah. name their kid after you or like something get tattoos of your face on their legs and you if you had people yeah like, yeah they've I sent not take my t-shirt off <laughs> yeah, I, got, boosh, I got full haslam on yeah, yeah, yeah. i got yeah. the bold haslam yeah. and the bearded haslam yeah. yeah version one and two yeah haslam. yeah so that, yeah <laughs> it's crazy man it's like you know if it wasn't you know if they, if there was no value and kids didn't if kids are like the main like people are the main part of it if you if the, you didn't uh appeal to these people they wouldn't want to buy your shit exactly. which means this, yeah. is, this is the thing isn't it like they wouldn't want you you're pointless to them that's why when you know some pro skaters are dicks and it's like why are you being a dick because yeah, kids no. are the, they're the ones you buy your board which, yeah, they're the which, ones supporting your lifestyle which makes you have this lifestyle yeah. I, I don't get that you know yeah. well they and they remember they remember it forever y- exactly and it's now more than yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, and now more than ever, if there's any pros that are dicks, everyone knows about it within minutes because it goes all over Instagram. Anyway, let's move on to a big subject, and you're probably sick to death talking about it. But to start this bit, we've got a little bit of a uh, we got a little surprise for Chris here. A little, He's what, defi- do you, what do you call this? A I'd call it a smorgage board. Well, yeah, a smorgage How do you say it? Smorgage. I can't Don't say ask that. Me how you say it? Thanks, Sean. No uh, there we go. We here got here is the finest selection that I could find in Derby of cheese and crackers. Because the next part we're going to talk about is cheese and crackers. The video you're in. <laughs> Have we got that, an- that? That is a brilliant segue. Thanks, do you, Sean. Do you want me to give you the rundown of the cheeses? <laughs> yeah, go on. What the hell is that? Yeah, one? right. From, talk us through. From right to left, the top right one is smoked cheddar. Oh yeah, this that one. one. Yeah, that's smoked cheddar. The one underneath it is Wensleydale. That's like a creamy cheddar with some Wensley cranberries in it. Wensleydale. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you not had that. No. It's very traditional cranberry. in England. Yeah, would recommend trying it. Yeah, it's got cranberries in it. Oh, very lovely. festive. And then you've got some normal, some normal cheddar yeah, just next to that. That's Below good. that, you've got Red Leicester. And I don't know how to pronounce the one that Toby brought. This but is uh, Paul Salou. Paul Salou. Nice and you've got Paul some Salou. French roulette after that, which is like a garlicky kind of soft cheese. Is that going to blow your head off? This one's uh, the no, strong no, no, one. No, 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 it's nice. The good one? Nice. Yeah. This one yeah, try it. That's looks the one like ice cream. Yeah. This one looks like ice cream. Yeah, I've yeah, just got to oh. get, I've got, this is a photo that <laughs> I've got to get it. Let me know when you've read it. Look at that. 
<laughs> Fucking amazing. Yeah, <laughs> that might be the thumbnail. So, <laughs> what a start to 2024. I'll have some of that as well. I yeah, want to try that. Don't smoke. try the Wednesday. Let, you might the smoke cheddar sounds over. great. Let, let Chris go first. Yeah, you, you yeah. go Wens first. Wednesday. 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 Wensley Dale. Dale. Yeah. Wensley Dale. Yeah, give it a go. That could also be the name of like a reservoir in a little village in England somewhere. Kirby, let's go Kirby Lonsdale. Let's go to Wensley Dale. It's in North Yorkshire. Yeah. Oh, there you go. It's the Yorkshire town. We got no there. butter for the... Butter? Uh, I mean, no. you could pour a bit of the soft cheese on there just as a bit of a moist maker. Moist maker? Come Take on, your time. Shit. I want, I want to try to smoke it. Look at this. You're not getting this on any other podcast. I'm just saying that. So, so. When you went on the nine club, did they... Uh, Give me win? cheese and crackers? No. <laughs> <laughs> they fucking blew it. They fucking blew it. Chris Roberts. Did they? No, Absolutely they didn't. blew it. <laughs> Let me get in here. All right. Whoa, that one's crazy, though. Well, it's here whenever you want it. It's got cranberries in, did you say? I, I think it's cranberries, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, when we did... Um, when we were thinking about titles for this thing, day one had um, peanut butter and, and jam. Yeah. That was going to be the first one. And right. me and Retta, Retta, me, myself, and um, day one, and I think Sock, we did a whole um, intro with peanut butter and, and jam sandwiches. We started because we did, uh, we had Retta sitting on the thing with milk and I think I was going to do, I can't remember what trick it was, but we hit the coping and the milk spilled and it, and that's where cheese and crack or peanut butter and jam. Cause there was a plate with a sandwich yeah. on it. That's where it would have said the title of the video, but there so was somewhere there's the outtakes of what it was yeah. going to be called. And then there was uh but there was a snowboarding contest. I think, I don't know who did it. Peanut butter and rail jam. I think it was Volcom or somebody might have, but that was right at the same time. And we didn't want to like, yeah, people get confused with what was going on. It so, was Volcom, yeah. Yeah, so we we um, was it called peanut butter and rail jam? Yeah, yeah. 2015. Yeah, whoa, 2015. Well, it's, that's it, that's the first result that came up. It's probably a they seasonal. Full, they've yeah. probably done it. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm going back here. Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, so we did that, and then we changed it. We we're trying to think of names. I think one of the names was like. Uh, I think they was joking with it, but it was like five feet, one sock. Cause it was like, <laughs> he was joking because it was a five foot ramp. Yeah. There was once a sock cause Socrates, they always filming it. And, uh, I think it was, I don't know why it was five feet, but it was, I thought it was like four feet with one. And but it didn't make sense anyway. Uh, and then, uh, I think we, I think he liked the, I think it was day one that came up with cheese crack because I sure as shit didn't do it. I was at that point I was still just stoked to be there. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It wasn't until after the video where I was like fortunate enough to be able to come into my own as a person where people would see me and know who I was instead of, you know, being the bearded guy that's with day one all the time kind mm -hmm. of guy. You know what I mean? Even though I always get to this day where where's day one, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> He's like Cher. Or where is he? Where is Prince he now? or <laughs> like madonna or something you know what i mean day one but yeah we chose cheese and crackers and then we had to refilm the whole intro and yeah the that was a lot of socrates a lot of day one's influence a lot of mine like the something you know, there was all our they left it pretty much up to us to do all of it i've got a bunch of questions about the video um i mean you, you can it still stands up it's still like really good to watch and very interesting. There's a couple of tricks in there. We were talking about it earlier. Try laying a little bit of that soft cheese on there as well to to stick the remainder of the cheese. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's like a glue. Mm. Um, it, one of the tricks. I don't know the name of it. I'm curious to know what you what you called it. You do the switch 180 over to regular feeble grind. Yeah. So what 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 is that that called? Because we were. It's not a sugar cane. It's four, isn't it? It's there's a sugar cane, cane novocaine. There's a novocaine, there's a novocaine mm -hmm. and then there's <coughs> technically a fourth one that The cocaine. The and cocaine, yeah. <laughs> that would be it, wouldn't it? Like, well, you could do that, because I was trying to do, as well as trying to do backside 180 to switch front feeble as well. So it's, it's, the, same, it's the same concept to it, yeah. um, but backside. And I don't know. I w I, we were just calling it like 270 feeble fakies or whatever. Yeah. It, it was we didn't have like a there wasn't any like novocaine hurricane sugarcane mm. thing going on 
I mean, but you you'd have a point. I, I mean, it would be the next. It would be the fourth one yeah. wouldn't it, of the of the set. Yeah. I don't know what it would actually be. What you could call it. Or I mean, the Novocaine itself is like kind of an elusive one. Mm, yes, it's <laughs> over and back, isn't it? Yeah. Fuck, I don't even know what a Novocaine is, isn't it? Kevin Kowalski is like, because I, I would skate Kevin, because every time I drive to LA from Vancouver, I stop in Lincoln City area and, and go down near Kevin Kowalski's house. And he has a mini ramp in his house. And he always, he's been always trying to talk about this trick. He calls it the, I think he calls it the tsunami. And it's a, it's a, um, like a, you can do a front or backside, but it's alley you fakey Smith, backsmith, backside, like alley oop fakey oh. backsmith, but then front side all the way around to forward. Hang on. Alley oop into it. Yeah. So you go front right. side alley oop to fakey Smith, and then you can half cab all the way around back over. Or you can do alley oop fakey backside alley oop fakey Smith, and then front side kind of hurricane thing all the way over. Within cheese and crackers, the thing that, I mean, I want to call them tricks. The, with the tires and stuff like that mm. did that stuff take forever to film because obviously no, as I soon mean, as you throw in something other than you and your skateboard you are putting another variable in that putting another layer yeah like like which one are you thinking like the the because any of the ones that are the one that is between the legs oh like and i drop in that was all like because i remember i was building that and day one wasn't in there yet and uh, i remember like trying to fucking make it work by myself I'm like fuck how the fuck am i gonna get this? what is gonna happen I'm like i don't know where the hell this tire is going and uh so i was just messing around with it and like he would come in and i would be like this is what i want to do <laughs> like do the horn thing and i was like where's the tire going like fuck i don't know i'll, I'll like clip it in my legs and come in maybe that'll whatever so it, it wasn't like the hardest thing to do because the hardest one i think we i tried was um where it rolled off and it hit the tail and it flung the board up. Because I wanted to do that without touching the board. I wanted it to fling up in the air. And I was trying to jump into it, into Fucking the ramp. Been good. But I couldn't. The only time it flipped was the first two times I tried it. And that was the second time I, it, I was like, oh, fuck, it went up. <laughs> that was the second time. So I thought it would work. And then every single time after that, it did not hit the tail the same and i was like oh fuck it I so i mean there's so many variables then to yeah find. so i we left the one where i just grabbed it and yeah but i would be so sick if it didn't if i didn't touch it it'd be amazing yeah. flinging into the ramp the so trick's it, insane where you set up a upwards money pad and i think day one goes round a tire hits a can and it lands into you oh that was yeah because it, it was swing, that it was swinging when and it, then you the, turn to the camera and go yeah no <laughs> I think that was probably a beer because they there's some you know there was boys in there drinking some yeah. beers like while they were skating and there was just leftovers yeah where where was that ramp it was in Long Beach yeah yeah and it was, was it there just for that it the ramp was yeah but the ramp and the beginning of um, uh, United by Fate my part in United by Fate the Glow video had me doing a Lance Mountain thing like I was going through this t these little ramps. You know, and it was the same warehouse. So that was when, that was after they, uh, Cheese and Crackers ramp was taken out. They rented the spot again and they built like a, like with that Lance Mountain in the house thing in there. And that was the, in yeah, that was the intro to my globe part for United by Fate. And then after that, they renovated the whole building and made it into like, I don't know what it is now, apartments or something. Mm -hmm. I can remember seeing at my local skate park indoor, seeing the case for it, like first cardboard case I've seen. Yeah, it was, like wasn't it? Yeah. And then the cheese and everything. And I was yeah. like, what the fucking hell is this? <laughs> and then I think I borrowed it. And then I looked on some forums again and there was like secret sections where it was yeah. just like only your footage, only mm. day one's footage. Then all the home is. The Easter eggs on and DVDs. I can, I can remember watching it. Blunt to fakies. Mm. Like yeah, over and over again. Blunt to fakies. I can remember watching that and going back to the indoor and just being like, we need to do something. <laughs> we need to get a shitload of but, tires. But none of Well, you're in luck, actually, because there's a scrapyard there. So if you want me to, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, want me to get you a tire, just, just give, me the, give me What the, I'd like to see is Chris Hasn doing a trick on the mini ramp, with, but using a tractor tire just to get it, keep it more kind of like British. <laughs> that, a massive yeah. fucking... Just big old rubber. Yeah. Big, like, deep tread tractor tire. 
Um, did we touch base so much on almost? I feel like there's a lot of history there that we could at least keep I'm going. Man. Go back, kind of, edit it. That's yeah. what I mean, yeah. I mean, we, we, we kind of... Don't, don't point know. at him. It's me that gets... You the edit it. Gets oh, there you go. Yeah, He's you a lucky could, guy. Yeah. Well, go, let's just jump back and forth. So yeah. You know, nightmare well, time trying to find it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about round three because that yeah, video, on, let's that talk about video as a whole is insane. And yeah. One of my friends called Dom in Leicester. It's for you, Dom. Dom in Leicester. He said... Ask Chris who won round three. Round three. That's a hard question. Who, well, whoever wins in a Rodney vs. Day one. Well, to me, round three, I won because it was the first time that I ever. That was that was my intro to the world. And what it, an intro! And it was part like well. it it changed that shit changed my life, man. So that to me, who gives a shit about them? I won that shit. For me. <laughs> he also wants to know about the bumps bar in Barca where you do like the one foot, but it almost like t it like took yeah. knees. Ron Allen, like he's a massive Ron Allen fan of that one. Yeah, so I if went there not to do that. I if didn't, there's any I didn't... info behind that trick, my friend Don will. Love well, Ron to Allen, yeah, yeah, that's all you need. So that's. I seen him do those one foots and I was like, they were that extreme, looks like a better one foot than yeah. the rest of the shit that's going yeah. on there. I'm going to learn that. And then, you know, I, it, some way that it flips back, I was like, if I can, if I just kind of lift my leg up, it comes up as well. So when I went to, uh, I went to Barcelona to skate that thing, we were on a bar, we we're on a almost trip. That was the last international trip I took with Daywan, by the way. 2003 oh. uh he's in the he's in the background of the kick for one for nose manual at parallel too you can see him sitting there that's the last time i was on an international trip with him but uh i went there to do what did, what did i go there to do i think i went there to do something weird like a i did it later double kickflip foot plant mm -hmm. uh i believe that's what i went there to do and i it didn't i was like it's not working because that thing doesn't have a solid edge to pop nice. off your shoulder. Yeah, isn't yeah. It? so I, I, I don't, I, it might not have been that one, but it, I went there to do something else. And then I was like, fuck, I, I was on the plane thinking about this. Now I can't do it. Like, <laughs> fuck, man. And then I was like, screw it. I'm just going to do this. And I, you know, it wasn't that many tries because I, I have that trick pretty good. And then uh, when I seen, I can't even remember who filmed it. I, I seen the the footage of it, and I was like, "Oh my god, that's it's just such a standout that was trick. Way mm. better than what I could. I mean, but a lot of my tricks are like that, like, like that, and the bumps of bar you do, where you also the, you like took your tuck, legs. Yeah, up. yeah. Well, that that those tricks because there out. was a guy uh, had a cover a sidewalk called Harry Pupunen from Finland. Finland, Harry Pupunen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. And and he had a. a I remember seeing. Uh, cover a sidewalk, a white background, and there's like a little, there's like a little bump. No, I think it might have been Kingpin. King, okay, it was yeah, Kingpin. Kingpin. Sorry, Kingpin, yeah, yeah, Kingpin. It was yeah, white and proper had a, tweak. Yeah, Ollie, little yeah. bump, yeah. but he did an ollie and his ass was lower. Yeah, kind of Danny Wainwright y esque, mm. like lower ass. Yeah, and then uh, Wainwright's gonna come on the show soon. Mm. Tell him I said hi. I haven't seen him in a while. Yeah, we'll do. Uh, and then uh, you know. Kenny Reed was doing a lot of the tweak yeah. ones. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I just liked the way that it looked, but in my head, I was trying to get Harry's um, the side of King, what is it? Kingpin? Kingpin, Kingpin yeah. yeah. Like was, European. Yeah, it came in, uh, yeah, I remember. I, uh, I was trying to get a Harry vibe to it, and uh, so I was like, fuck it, let's do it. Can you find that photo? Because that's a rad picture. That's yeah, fully, really white. he is below the board. Yeah, it? his it's, ass is below. I've seen, I've seen a, a Wainwright photo of Danny's, way before of Danny's ass being lower than the board. Also, layback ollieing over hand, over bars, yeah, insane. Yeah, like, I don't I, know I, how uh, South Bank. Yeah. Danny did it out over the how thing. The hell, I don't know how hand first, then ollie, or ollie, because it looked like he's ollieing. I don't know if he hand first, then ollie. I don't know. Anyway, that is sick, Danny. That was sick. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's. I I ended up doing that and uh, that ollie one foot and. It was all Ron Allen inspired because he would do that stuff all the time mm. on flat. And it would like, dude, that looks insane. Mm. And uh, it was as close as I could get to the A-team Gershon uh, trick that you had to do to win money. You know that one he did over the pyramid? Yeah, look at that. So sick. Yeah, look how low his ass is. Like, how the hell do you get your ass that low? You know when, you you know when A-team had all these tricks you had to do to get money? Gershon's one where he like did the... The weird clipper one or whatever. Yeah. He's like, that was this. I wanted to do that, and then I ended up not 
I like I wanted to learn that trick, and that's how I started doing the Ron Ron Allen one foots because I'm like, oh man, I can do this. What's it, what's the trick then with doing that extreme one foot? Are you because that's tucked in? Are you to the just thigh. letting your front it's foot? It's a terrible kind of, ollie. You just like yeah. You, if you airball your ollie, like rocketing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and then. Fucking hell, that is dicing with death flow, isn't it? Having it between your butt, like where your It's not are. bad because it it doesn't it doesn't go. I mean, if you if you if your back foot came in like down, then yeah. you're toast. But you're not. Your your legs like this, so it's like Mike Vallela when he used to no complies over the garbage can. Yeah, you're keeping it you're, you're, yeah, your your knee and your your knee and stuff is gonna flatten it out. But usually when I do it, my my foot comes when I try to bring it up higher. It comes up the board, so my foot my back foot flattens it out it doesn't yeah. really touch my knee at all mm. yeah so it'll flatten it out and then it just flops down that's why i usually land like nose heavy all the time but sick trick though i love doing that too i mean it's like a it's almost like a no-handed like madonna or something <laughs> yeah. kind of is, isn't it yeah yeah like people I, I used to try i used to do uh no-handed benny hanas too but yeah. they were those are fucking scary because it's yeah. like a how do you control that just Relying on grip tape in your shoes to yeah yeah the shoes mostly yeah I've seen people do it now I mean I never filmed it because it's I was like it's not worth it we're gonna get totally screwed on this trick and won't be able to skate but um, the Benny Hanna gets a bad rep doesn't it that's well that's right and it was the time where it was like terrible you're like dude don't Benny Hanna I saw that I've done many in my time but yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, when Ronnie Krieger did the Benny oh, dude, figure that's I was different. there then when he did that, and it, it didn't take him long. That's different. He was doing front front side one eighty Benny Hanna finger flips, like that's insane. McCrank used to do, <laughs> McCrank used to do switch Benny Hanna's out of, out of the this thing this bowl in Whistler too, like yeah. neck high, switch Benny Hanna. Ronnie, what what contest was that? Ron Whaley kickflip melon over the pyramid. What was that? Um, uh, Munster. Yeah, no. It, Ronnie did. Ronnie would do Benny Hanna finger flip, but he did. I think he did front side one eighty Benny Hanna finger flip. Did he not? The one that he did. This, the the one that I when I was there was that. I'm sure it was at Lausanne. At the was it Lausanne? Could have been. Yeah, I think yeah. it was. That's the one I saw. It's the one where Guns and Pat Duffy collide over the car. And, oh, and I Penny, oh. Penny did the hippie jump through the car. I remember. I know the one. And Day One was, sure was Day that. One was at that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it was that one though. I don't know. Anyway, still... I'm questioning my own memory now. I, like, because you, you're welcome. You know, like <laughs> <laughs> all the times you see it on video, but then I saw some of it in real life, and it's like, was yeah. It well, I never. That's a, I never saw it real life. I remember the videos, and I remember it was. Um, oh, was it in Donut Duty? Fuck, I don't know. Ron, it was because Ron Whaley, Chris San was there, Ethan Fowler, uh, Rodil De Rajo Jr. was when he had long hair was there. He was unreal, wasn't he? Yeah. And Carlos. Uh, De Andrade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He has. I remember watching him do Nolly 360 heel flips on mini ramp at the mini ramp that I switched back for it. The one where that Slam City Jam barbecue was at. Yeah. There's a concrete mini ramp there, and he was doing like Nolly backside 360s, Nolly backside 360 heels. And I was just like, oh my God, they're like four feet out of the coping. How do you do that? Yeah. I'm real. Alpiard has that too. He did Nolly, Nolly big spin, tail grab, uh, to tail and then reverse. Revert. Yeah. yeah, but they're like, yeah. this high, you know. Yeah, he had that. He did those those on when Jeff had that ramp, didn't he? Out in the in desert. The yeah. the, I remember an old video watching Jeff Rally do uh, back heel over coping, in a, like a it was like a street, shitty street puck contest that yeah. had like a ramps in a road or something and he'd like back heeled on his quarter pipe but it was like three feet out and i was like that looks so sick mm. and of course i never learned how to do it and gershon skating with gershon mostly like yeah i, I saw uh, uh, gershon fuck i don't even know it was either in munster or switzerland outside the Go hotel on, get that it was cheese. when he was he was riding the power board that had the it was red with the the white cross on it oh and, yeah and yeah, he yeah. was it was in the street outside the hotel and it was like you know that kind of we it's we like, call we call it um uh 
I guess you would call it pebble dash, you know, like the side, really rough kind of, almost like sharp gravelly kind of coating on the pavement. Mm -hmm. Isn't so that all of England? What's that? That's all of England, isn't it? Uh, no. <laughs> no? Well, yeah, it pretty much. Worse. <laughs> yeah. It, no, gets, it worse. gets worse. <laughs> no, yeah. But it, this was in, I'm sure it was either, I, I think it was Germany. I can't remember. But we were walking along and, and Gershon, Gershon's out there. It's good with that paste on top. <laughs> and he's skating this curb, right? And the, the paste, so you've got a regular curb. The pavement is really horrible. Kind of like the side pebble of a, dash like, like shit. a 70s house, yeah. but a road. Rough. <laughs> Rough like. as fuck, right? And it's it's unwaxed and he's doing like nolly lip slides along this thing and he's sliding for fuck. I mean, this is decades ago, so my, my brain's probably haggard from it, but uh, you know, rose tinted spectacles, etc. But I'm sure it was about fifteen foot. He was just all the way along and this this stuff shouldn't be slid on like it, it's it's like anti-slip stuff and he's doing that how did we get on that? what were we talking about before that i lost my mind when the cheese yeah, came mini out ramp. So we were talking about yeah. mini ramp and him doing we're talking it. about the cheese and tricks, crackers yeah. And, yeah but yeah honestly as soon as his cheese came out i switched off yeah. gone, he's gone. he's just been eyeing up the cheese yeah. Yeah. it's on nobody home uh no gershon was crazy about that because a lot yeah. like every spot he skated was no not wax so everything that you see on video was probably insanely impossible to do anything on and he would just grind the shit out of it somehow i always remember him at radlands when he'd slam just yeah. sweat <laughs> sweat just like 10 15 foot long as yeah. he slides out he but, had some sick i mean though, man. for consistency gashon was something else yeah especially on ramps and stuff like all yeah. those kickflip grabs to fake here well, scenic drive mm. kind of scenic drive man and like all that stuff yeah so cool. Yeah, he's always been a favorite of mine. His Transworld part was unreal as well. Wait, hold on a second. We need to talk about who's supporting this episode of The Brain Drain Show, the podcast that you're enjoying listening to right now. Who is it? It is D's Nuts Hardware. D's Nuts is available in over 50 skate shops and skate parks up and down the uh, country. They also support over 30 skateboarders, some of which have pro bolts, including... So we got uh, Ellie Ford, Joe Hinson. Eddie Belvedere. Eddie, oh, Eddie Belvedere. Jordan Thackeray. Oh, they're Jesus one inch Christ. ones. You can have the one inch. Eddie Who's Belvedere. are those? The Eddie Belvedere? I'm going to go for the Jordan Thackeray 7 8s. Thank you very much, D's Nuts. Thank you for being a show sponsor and supporting what we do. Those guys all have pro model bolts pro with bolt. their own specific colorway truck bolt. So and sticker pack. So if you want in a high quality skateboarding hardware bolt for a low cost, make sure you check out D's Nuts. Make sure you grab a pack from Roller Snakes if your local skate shop doesn't have them and hit up D's Nuts on Instagram. Drop them a follow. Any parting words about these fine, fine bolts, Toby? Big ups D's Nuts for supporting the show. Thank you for supporting the show. Right, back to the podcast. Um, do you want to talk some more about almost? Round three. What else you what got? Else, what we, we want to talk about Brainchild. I wanted the quick... Oh, we need to talk about EA Skate as well, don't we? I wanted to quickly just ask if um, when the five inch video was coming out, if you knew that that was maybe going to be the last project from almost like a... No, of course not. That was, I mean... They'd was start... that the video that introduced Willow as well? To... Uh, what? Lewis was in Cheese and Crackers. Lewis had an intro to Cheese and Crackers, right? Like mm. his... his uh, he had a... Was it Curtis Mayfield song in the in the remember. bonus? He had a part. He would that was his. Willow, I I just love that part, like with a German intro. And it's like the German are great people. Well, it's crazy about that vid. That we had no, like because I had a part ready to go, and uh, I was and I don't think anyone else did. And then I was like, I'm gonna put this part out. Like, what do you? And they're like, Oh wait, wait, we're gonna make a whole thing. I'm like, What the fuck? No one's got it. I'm gonna wait, wait like two years, dude. Two, I gotta put it out. And I'll make a new one. He's like, no, no, no. So I, I think Willow had a bunch of stuff. Day one was skating literal rocks and tree stumps. Well, day one had day one had footage for days, but he kept giving it to like Spitfire and like, so he would he was just going through the mo he was just getting it yeah. all the time. So he did that, and then uh, so we we basically had no idea about what the video was gonna look like no one to edit it no one to do it and it was like how do, what the hell are we gonna do and then uh, i was filming at the bear like, no parts edited yet nothing no songs chosen we had the footage but like how are we gonna do it and at this point i was not just glad to be there anymore because now i knew i knew my my routine of like what's going on like all right this is 
this is how I usually do my videos. This is what I want it to look like. Da 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 da. da. Uh, and I was the only one doing it because usually when you do a video like that at the time, you you know you may release at the end of the week, and then during the week there's like barrack stuff and there's like transwell stuff yeah, yeah. just to take over the whatever. And at the end, you're like, here's the part. Woo. Uh, at the time, I was only the only one doing anything from any of those things, so I was like stressing out like i mean i don't know if it was bumming anyone else out but it was like bumming me out like fuck why the fuck is anyone else doing anything like why am i the only one doing trying to do the bangings or the the like the the trans ruled shit or whatever so i was at i was filming a banging at the old barracks and dude i was just skating so much i was i remember because i was trying to i was just i had just learned um like the backside 180 to switch front side in 5 or backside 180 nose grind but the mark su one yeah, yeah. so i was i was doing it on the rail at the barracks trying to do because the first time i ever seen anyone well i was like trying to like i think i could do this and I, i've never seen anyone do it and then uh, i just skated for day i could not get it i skated for hours and then i was like man i gotta take a piss and i started when I took a piss, it was like Pepsi, and I was like, "Ooh, that's not good." Mm. And then, ready uh, to dehydrate, dude. UK had I mean, it was insane. And then I was like, "I gotta stop." I remember Matt Miller being in there. I don't know if he knew what happened after. He probably does now, but uh, I couldn't. I started feeling crazy. And then at the flash forward to the end of the week, I'd flown back to Canada because I couldn't sleep. Went to the ER. Both of my kidneys had failed. Yeah, yeah he mentioned. This. So, so I was. You mind you, going into that? No, I don't. Well, I mean, whatever. It's it. Drink water. <laughs> That's <laughs> Make sure, it. Open one of these liquid yeah. chefs. I think you've been yeah. trying to open one. I have it. I was, I was, and oh, and the and the start of Coop's uh, intro to the almost video was him opening a beer when he did the before the Franz Ferdinand song. Yeah. Started. So that was just my tribute to Coop. Um, <laughs> Fraser just took his earphones off. Then is that yeah. too loud for you? No, no, no. I was just yeah. listening for the aircon. <laughs> so. Um, I went into other like you're you have to stay in the hospital. And I was like, yeah. fuck, I why right now, dude? Like, fuck. And then I, I was in there for like eight days. Dialysis and everything. Gnarly. They had I couldn't edit my part, nothing. And they were like And that was purely from the yeah, not, not high just going in, in too hard. No, yeah, too hard no skates, yeah, too skates. hard no no water. That's it. Fuck. And they both went at the same Done. time. Done. Yeah. And That's then I was like fucking hell. I had 20, I had like, you know, how long we've been skating. I've been skating for like 20 years and I was all day, every day. And so my body was able to handle it all, like in terms of mm. not going into a coma because of my potassium and all this creat creatinine and stuff were going through the roof. Um, so I, I didn't think anything was like going on. It, I felt crazy bloated and stuff, but nothing. And then they were like, yeah, if anybody else, if you, if you weren't conditioned or like basically skated for that long and conditioned your body that long, the people that come in here with the same levels, you would have been in a coma a week ago. Fucking so hell. I, I was like, Ooh, that's not good. So I, well, cause you're so used to well, skating. Dude, my, your bodies, I was tanned from being in LA. So my, I wasn't pale yeah. and, and, uh, and my body was able to just from the endurance and just yeah. the years of skating and like yeah. activity, activity, it was able to handle, postponing me going into complete shut like, down. yeah yeah shut down mm. that's uh, insane but then i was in there like the last i was in there for basically two weeks and a week and a half maybe and then they're telling me that like this is prime video so i had like seven i had like 15 17 songs for this part i was like dude here's my list i'm mangled so i can't go there but I'll I'll be okay with these, and this is kind of generally how I want the layout of the part to be, or whatever. Are you quite happily active being when the part's being edited? Oh, I'm there. Knowing, well, I have to be I know there. Some people are like, don't like seeing it until. No, the no, no. Premiere. I cannot. I cannot. I can't. I have to. This is where Rodney's influence. I have to. This yeah. is you me. Have to make this sure, is my. Yeah. This is what people see of me. So this is the only thing I basically have control of in terms of what I am as a skater is what people see of me and how yeah. they see it. Um. And go back to my last part that I had. I mean, I was editing with my friend Joe, and I, it was a complete nightmare to him about it. But sorry, Joe. Um, 
yeah, so I got all these songs ready. I was like, okay, well, I can't be there. It's some dude's going to, I don't know who's going to edit it. Every single song got denied because they're from the 70s and they're like, yeah, yeah. every one of them had like the same label. So they were like, oh, okay. all of them got denied. I was like, oh my, now I don't even have a song. Like, this is insane. I'm gonna this have is a, for the five inches. Yeah, I'm going to have an anxiety song. attack. This sucks. And then uh, they were like, oh, don't worry, Colin Kennedy dvs colin kennedy is gonna edit it and i was like oh my god thank god but that was no, a relief. you can trust him with it Dude, yeah i was well because i'd seen you know skate more and all this mm -hmm. stuff and all this all the stuff he did with day one i was like oh my god this is amazing like i don't have to such a relief and he had he we literally just was like here colin just here's the footage figure it out I guess, yeah. and he made the whole fucking video, and I was like, "Because that song in that part's really good." Well, too. that was that was a song that Tori was supposed to have that he had for Tori for some video he made with Tori, and he was like, "He didn't use it, but I have this." And I'm like, "Dude, like, where did you come yeah. from?" Like, dude, thank yeah, yeah. God, man. And yeah. that almost round three song as well is so. That good. was my choice because that, that was playing... another question from one of the mates back home. They just said, "Can you ask him if he's ever lost his favorite game?" Because that's uh, the lyrics of that, the song, Well, isn't it? I was like, playing Grand Theft Auto. No, <laughs> no. Uh, uh, Gran Turismo. And that was on there. And that was the sound. Win it, win it. I, yeah, I was playing it because uh, I was staying in Hollywood with, around the time when uh, we're editing, we were editing the... Because mm -hmm. all the time where I was filming for uh, round three, I was I was staying with Coop and my buddy Sue and um, a couple other guys. And they... Uh, you know, we'd play video games, Max Payne, all this stuff. But we played Gran Turismo the whole Solid time. Game. And then uh, that song was on. When I was thinking about a song, I was like, damn, that one kind of sounds crazy. Because I'm so used to hearing it. Yeah. So I was playing the game. And then we, I was like, yeah, let's see. And they were able to get it. It which fucking was shocking. fits really well as well. Yeah. I mean, it, it wasn't like, it wasn't because I was a heavy, you know, Cardians fan or anything. So, like, it just happened to be what it is. And then. Just like I the had song. so many people come to me and were just so hyped on the song choice. I was yeah. like, dude, I, like I didn't even know that song existed outside of the Grand Until Crush Yeah. Song. So and then but it it really, you know, you know, it really helped the part help it helped the part yeah. stand out yeah, yeah, it was, you know yeah. what I mean? So But I do I do in terms of who won round three round, I don't you can't you can't, you can't, can't answer even, it. Yeah. Can't answer I mean, to me again, I won because it the the way that my life went after that was yeah you know insane like so um insane in what way what just the just, recognition like, and just, well not even recognition just like it allowed me to dude i pro skater man yeah. like yeah. with rodney and day one like yeah my following, name, following a dream with the great escape yeah my name is right under theirs now like it's like right there yeah they, yeah they especially at that time because their huge thing was the video and i was this new guy that had the first part that like did kind of weird moves that people were like, what is this? Uh, and I was, I was directly associated with two of the best dudes on the planet for skateboarding. <clears throat> you know what I mean? How was the yeah. video premiere for that? Was you shitting yourself when like that part? Oh yeah, dude. Like, well, I, I always, I hate, like I didn't even show up for my five inch premiere. I didn't even go there. Yeah. Uh, and it was the is only it like part. an anxiety thing. Like, what, like no, I, I don't, I mean, maybe I just don't, it was just like, oh, I can't deal with it. It probably is anxiety stuff, but uh, I didn't even, it was the only part I had last part in and five inch and I didn't even go. Yeah. I went to a trampoline house and jumped nice. for like five <laughs> minutes before. I've not been to a trampoline house for a Dude, long time. Yeah. I thought I was going to be there for like an hour or two hours. That's for like 20 minutes. So I was like, Oh my God. Yeah. So the, the five inch video, that was one that you just, you didn't sit, you didn't sit in. I had, I had, I, I, well, I was in the hospital, but I had, uh, and you said you gave him like a rough idea. Well, you cause I like, always. When I get footage, I'll put it in a placing where where I, I kind of, on my like you know, on final cut timeline, yeah. I'll put it in a placing. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. With no song, this is generally the placing I want things to be because yeah. there's like a, uh, you know, of what I used to try to do is there's like a weird kind of like, weird wowy kind of thing at the start. I I I don't want to put filler in. <laughs> yeah, I try no, my hardest it's... never to put because. What's the point of putting filler? You have like three years to film a part. You shouldn't have any filler. Yeah. It should be like, you know, that's a every, good quote. Though. Everything should be yeah. Tell everything. people that you got three you know years I mean? to film a part. There'd be no filler. Well, yeah, because yeah, like true. you you want to like why would you kickflip a seven stair? Yeah. 
in a part that took you like three years and you, mm-hmm. you know, and then the trick after a, your whatever 10 stair kickflip is like, you know, <clears throat> back nose blunting a 10 stair. Yeah. Well, when just whatever. I always, I never thought like, that's why my tricks were so fucking all over the place because I only do them one time. If I get them on video, that's it. Mm-hmm. I don't need to do them ever again. People don't know what trick I'm going to do next. So they're, that was another thing Rodney taught me is if they don't know what you're going to do, they're always going to come back and watch you yeah. uh, skating because yeah, they sense. don't expect you. <clears throat> they don't know what to expect from what you're going to do. And if yeah. your skill set is in the right spot and, you know, your footage is always of a, a constant quality, then they're going to, regardless, they're going to come see that. what you're doing. Yeah, because. That's true. You know, it's like, what the hell is this dude going to do now? So I, I tried to never, <clears throat> like, pigeonhole myself anywhere. Mm-hmm. And then that goes in terms of, and that was part of this longevity thing that I was going with that time where Rodney was telling me, like, if you want to, why would you pigeonhole yourself in a specific type of skate? I mean, mastering a specific type of skating, and fully, it, that's a whole different thing that, you know, personal preference, you it's amazing if people do that. Uh, but I like not pigeonholing myself in a specific type of skating so that if later down the road, like I am right now, if all I want to do is skate mini ramp, it's not going to be weird looking and they would still, mm-hmm. people would still want to watch. Or if I want yeah. to do a manual, it wouldn't be weird because people would still be like, oh, he's yeah. I'm used to seeing him do a manual and stuff in terms of like if I was my whole career was me doing nose blunts down like 18 stair and 19, 20 stair handrails. And then all of a sudden they see me trying to do a kickflip nose manual. Be like, whoa, this is yeah, not the, this is not the guy. Out. Like, cause I could watch day one do a kickflip nose manual and be like, oh, that feels good because I'm used to that. Mm-hmm. Um, Just on that note with day one, cause I mean, his manual game is something else, but it is. Does it take him long to do manual stuff? Like, he's because some of it good. is mind boggling. Well, like, well, it's another, it's a way of he films stuff. Like, he'll go and I mean, I don't know how he works now, but he used to go and try to have something in his mind. Yeah. And, uh, well, like Switch 360 flip, fakey Manny, fakey three, whatever, mm-hmm. some crazy. And, uh, <clears throat> he'll go and he'll film, like, all right, he's going to go and do a switch flip whatever switch flip switch many fake you he'll film like 10 crazy tricks just mm. getting his feet on like mm-hmm. doing it so he'll have like 10 clips and then you'll go into his okay now i'm ready to do it mode so when he Fuck, does I all of them that. when yeah. he does all of them he's got like you know he's already got 10 tricks stack. that he could like oh here's a fakey tray fakey manny flaky flip i'll go here yeah yeah like like all these things and then he's yeah. got this you know, switch tray, fakey many, fakey tray that will go in round three. But I remember him saying that trick didn't take him very long at all, Fuck. which is insane. I was watching round three earlier, and when he's doing like, when he's doing like fakey, uh, fake flip, fakey money, then he's doing flips mid money oh. at the same time, mm-hmm. and then he's still flipping out of them. Mm-hmm. So it always, it's not like flipping, flip out. Yeah. It's like flip mid flip, flip out. Mm-hmm. It's like all right, mate, you're just taking the piss. Same <laughs> like, on song though, isn't he? Um, I always used to like it when he was doing, he did like the uh, inward heel flips to blunt slide on painted tables, mm-hmm. like down the stairs, the kick flip nose blunt slides. Mm-hmm. Like that to me is like, that stuff is gnarly. Did you hear, it was on an interview of him where he said that he went to a demo once and a guy came up to him and was like, I'm so sorry, Mr. Day One Song, there's no picnic tables here. <laughs> and Day One apparently just went, oh, I guess I'll go home then. <laughs> <laughs> but he obviously didn't, but imagine someone running up to you like, there's no picnic tables to fences here. What are we going to do? Someone like, I mean, pretty much all of day one stuff. It's like the top shelf, the top tier. Well, I mean, he, he'll go and like he'll, everything that he does, he dives in like 100%. Yeah. And he just yeah. completely obliterates it. And then he moves away. Yeah. But, but everyone that is from that era will watch that. And that what is that's the day one that resonates with them. Then they look at what else he's done. And he's like Channel Street. He's done like... He's, he's like murdered so many spots like that, yeah, like yeah. so many different avenues of skating that it, it's crazy that like the skill set he has to do all that stuff. And he's just the intense focus. Like he'll get, he'll like laser focused on, like when he won the, 
he had to do like a skater of the year thing and he did it at he was at channel street like underneath the bridge spot mm. dude he would go there every single day for like five like i don't even know how many years, four or five years every day just live there and then that was what he would do with the picnic tables he would just go and yeah like years just go and just hammer out these cr- until it's like okay dude nobody can nobody can shine touch, it down yeah, anybody that touches the picnic table is gonna think of you yeah. Anybody who touches Channel Street at the time will be like, oh, Day One did this yeah. year. Yeah, it's just the way that he operates. I mean, it, it works. Um, should we, what do you want to talk about? Fucking hell, you got enough cheese on there, mate. I know, he's a greedy Just bastard, isn't he? Do you, would you like this one, Mr. Haslam? <laughs> well, you got a smorgasbord on that cracker, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do what you just did. Let's see, mix the flavors a little hard. bit. Let's, um, while you guys just eat that, let me just go through here and... Yeah, what else do you got? Oh, we've got loads, mate. This is the thing. Like, I don't want to... I don't give a shit, dude. Guys. I want to talk about Prey and Child Skateboards because it's very close to Brain Drain. Mm. So maybe there's <coughs> a collaboration there. Oh, that'd be good, wouldn't it? What was what was it we said last yesterday? Drain Child. Drain Child. <laughs> drain Child. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine the uh, the the graphic on a gra- on a drain child board would just be like some baby in a gutter or something? Be so drain racist. child that that could it also could be. Have, it could have it, you know. In the oh show. yeah, yeah, That'd yeah. Be sick to be fair. Drain child. <laughs> It almost sounds, sounds like a punk, I'm, I'm tr- like gutter digest- punk thing. Or yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> thrust punk band from yeah. Ohio. <laughs> I'm, I'm digesting that. We are drain child. <laughs> Yeah, um, let's talk, let's get into Brainchild Skateboards because after almost finished, was there any interest from other board sponsors? Or no. You just wanted to do <laughs> your. No one at all? No. Well, no. I tried to do. I was also like, is it worth it? I mean, I remember, I remember meeting Louis Barletta to see about Enjoy, but then, you know, I just didn't, I didn't feel like it was the right move, so. With that left away, and then I, I was like, "What's the point?" Like, I've already, I'm, I'm not like, you know, I'm like forty something years old, and I'm gonna get paid like a two hundred dollars a month to deliver quality, to deliver the yeah, quality yeah. that that I'm, I'm known for and that I want, and it's just not, it's not worth the, like, if I was gonna do it, I might as well just do it myself. Hmm. Yeah. So uh, that was basically it. So I just was like, screw it. Same with shoes and stuff. I mean, like I did. Like, what else do I want from it? What else do I want from I mean, professional you would, skateboarding? You, I, it's good you achieved it all, didn't you? So. Yeah, I mean, the ga- there's. I mean, I was a part of EA Skate, which is ridiculous. We're going to talk about that yeah. in a minute. You know, I, I had a, I had, one if not two videos, the bar, a part of videos that like stood the test of time yeah, in, yeah, in the skate skateboard world, in history. Yeah. which was, like, amazing. I mean, I got to. I, you know, I got to skate with some of the best dudes on the planet, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? And and now they're close friends of mine, some yeah. of them, you know, so, and what, like, what else do I need from it? I like, it, 20, what is it, 23 years? It's crazy. 20, yeah. 21 years? 21 we years. We spoke about it quite a lot where there are some people that are just very humble with skating, like Heath Kershaw. You know, he got to a point where he was just like, I'm going to do my own thing. Hmm. I don't need to fit into something else now. I think he took a lot of inspiration from Matt Hensley in that part. In that part. Yeah, I, yeah. I think I seen something from an interview from him where he was like, he always looked at Matt Hensley, how he was just like, you know what? It, this is it, man. I'm, that's good. Mm. Yeah. That's good enough. I've achieved what I wanted yeah, that's to. It. And that's it. That's it. Yeah. You know, but as long as you can, there. Like, you can still enjoy it when you're away from all of that anyway. Yeah. Well, that's the like, business and play. That's the balance yeah, if you don't have fine. it then you're you're What's it quick called? forever the uh the court balance thing it's got an actual name for it hasn't it you know what i mean yeah there is yeah no, there's no <laughs> scale no shit street language the there's scale, like there's it, like yeah. a proper there's a proper name for it but yeah brainchild let's, yeah so, let's so, dive into brainchild. Yeah, so brainchild where did uh how why when uh well i mean it was well it was the next thing that i hadn't done yet yeah Mm-hmm. You know, like, I mean, I did, I did everything and then it's a, owning, starting a company was, you know, the next thing. I mean, it had, I had a lot more, um, it was, uh, the plans were a lot bigger than what it, it turned out to be, but, uh, things kind of went sideways 
mm. uh, you know, pretty heavy for me and some other things. And then, so I, after like a year, so I, I, it was the first time in my life, like I couldn't, um, use skating as an escape from the things in my head that, that I was dealing with in, in my life, you know? Mm. And it, it was, I, I've never felt like that since I started skating until something that went tits up that was directly related to my skating that I, even if I skated, I couldn't stop thinking about it. So then I, I that's when I built my van out. My I bought a ProMaster van and I built mm. that because that's the only thing that took the, like, um, helped me handle what was going on when I was getting kind of messed over at the start of because I was had some partners that were doing some weird stuff, you know? Mm. Um, and then that was like about almost a year of just losing my mind. Just like, oh my God, like, I thought skating was this thing that would always be able to mm -hmm. solve on. my problems yeah, and yeah, like yeah. help me help me cope with stuff. And it was the first time where I was like, oh my God, it's not Maybe working. not, yeah. And, and uh, so when, when I acquired everything back and it was just me that had now started, and I think it was October, August or October of 2018, mm -hmm. I think, maybe. Um, that's when I was like, I halted all plans for what it was i was like this is never fucking happening to me again like mm -hmm. i'm never putting anything uh um i'm never doing anything to that extent that's going to affect my enjoyment of skating mm. and being able to have that solace in yeah. what i do in skating I, i'm never doing that again so i'm need, i need to start from the bottom and i have to be like what do i want this thing to be and around when I was figuring it out is when I was in Barcelona and I was hanging out with Ramers and stuff. And dude, oh, that whole year was a goddamn Ramers. nightmare with that stuff. And then I was like, dude, I'm like, fuck this. I'm just going to brainchild. I started, I started drawing like the board. I started drawing graphics and like trying to get the, all, you're an artist, Yeah, I do. I do all the work for brains. Yeah. Like I do like the, all the stuff. I mean, yeah, my, business sense is miserable like, i don't know anything i don't i don't give a shit about that stuff like mm -hmm. i'm a i'm a creator i like drawing and yeah. like an artist and skating i like doing that stuff um and then uh just in terms of what i just went through and then the ramers thing and then all this stuff i'm like there's got to be a bigger reason for uh why i want to do this because it's 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 not just to be another skate brand like i don't give mm. a shit about just being another brand and yeah but i i can't I don't do it i can't do it myself and yeah. and uh, uh up until recently there's been a couple of things where it i might not i might be able to um work with like spe like skate doctors that are like trained professional doctors that skate and like can help with mental wellness and stuff that i kind of gravitated towards making my boards and like you know donating to the Ramers Foundation or the yeah. uh, Project Semicolon or mm. the Trevor Project all these things you know um not a lot I mean I make like a hundred boards at a time yeah uh I never I don't even sell to stores I don't do any not that I don't want to it's just that I can't afford to mm -hmm. uh and then when I started making boards I started seeing the uh money you get from online sales direct to customer sales and i was like two dollars a board is what i was getting this whole time i mean understand yeah. there understand there's like all these different levels in a big distribution that need to be covered yeah but, they're all taking a little but little bits like skateboarders are the face of the company like we are what draws people into the company we are what gets kids inspired with the art you know, art yeah. and skating and the filming. This is what gets people inspired to buy from that company. And we're getting two dollars a board when they're making like sixty bucks a board or fifty bucks a board or something. Mm. I was like, what the hell? The first time I even thought about it was when I started doing this. And I'm yeah. like, Oh shit. Well Yeah. If I can just get like five people to like my brand, the shape of board that I use my draw one of the things every month i could sustain it at a level where i don't need to worry about it 
and I could donate here and there and just wait until I come on to someone that is um, of similar mind, but of a more kind of uh, professional uh, mm. mental um, mm. helper, I yeah. guess, than myself, because I started, people started hitting me up about things that they were going through and stuff. And I was like, dude, I don't know. Sh I can't help you with any mental wellness stuff. Yeah. Like, I, I, like I'm not, uh, I'm not, um, educated in that realm at all. I only know from myself. So, uh, it was as until like maybe last month that I met someone that could potentially help me, uh, do what I wanted to do in terms of like making it a, a safe space, making it a place where people can come to, um, you know, find answers for maybe things that they're looking for not just in, not just in skating but mm -hmm. being a skateboarder gives us uh, access to like a, a, the youth just because of our just because of skateboarding being mm -hmm. so like um not corporate you know and they don't see it as corporate there's, there's like a, that's what this doctor said too he has a skateboarding background so he, he these kids gravitate towards him and are, are e it's easier to speak to him because they can just in terms of like you're you know how to kickflip like oh my god me too mm. yeah like, you break that barrier like straight you away. skate no wait there's already a language there that you don't have to talk about yeah. and there's already a connection that you already know yeah. all these other doctors don't have it they will never know what it feels like to have that and so if i if there's avenues like that that i can incorporate into my brand and stuff to make it a more than just a like making videos skate videos and shit like i mean that'll be a part of it like i can do you know i have you know my friends i got friends there rodney i did a guest board with rodney and then i'd be like where do you like, we can donate money anywhere you want like what do you want to do with it like so it's just the it's just uh an entity that i want to make into something bigger that's going to help kids and it doesn't have to be skating but that's just the world that i'm in you know so yeah and and if i can get access to these dudes like doctors that'll help me do this and it like because, I mean, there's the, I have the credibility and stuff in the skate world to do it, but I don't have the, the credibility to deal with mm. the actual issues that these people have. Yeah. Yeah. So I can reach, this is the platform to reach it. I need the, I need the educated power to, to like. Drive it. Yeah. Yeah. So that is the overall goal to it. And from then on, I don't know what the hell can I, I can mean, I could, you know, maybe I'll make a snowboarder. I don't know. If I, <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm going to make BMX bikes. Because so right? you, it's yours, you can just be like, yeah, it's fuck me. Yeah, I'm going to make yeah. a snowboard. Yeah, and it's me. It's like I can do whatever. Like I want to give some, you know, hacker guy, like a board or like a programmer for EA Skate, whatever. I could give them a board if I wanted to. And it'd be like, maybe it'll shine light onto some of the things that they go through to where it affects um like some of the that there are people in their world will come in to maybe see the brand and get avenues of sorting stuff out in their life as well so that was the way i went with it after i got it all back and i've just been coasting because i don't have the other half yet but uh work in progress yeah work in progress and and it's just you know perfect name for that stuff mm. you know like oh, yeah, it's a good it, name it uh really good name it you know, with the brain and your, you know, useful skating being so useful and stuff that it, it, you know, I think there is a lot to that I can do with it, but I just need to, my, I need to do business school or some shit because I'm terrible at it. Uh, yeah. I hate doing social media. I hate doing like calling people and like figuring stuff out, yeah. finances, tech. I hate all of that stuff, man. I need someone to do that for me because, but then I'm like, I don't want anyone to have their fingers in it because last time that happened, I got, dumped on you know what mm. i mean so it's a weird like weird little thing but there's opportunities that might be on the right 2024 might be good so maybe i'll Fingers come back crossed. in another year and we can have a whole different convo about Fuck what yeah. oh, you're welcome here anytime. <laughs> if, you, if you need to stay over i will sleep on the floor you can take the bed <laughs> oh it's all good oh, there's a couch right there man i'm good yeah I mean, the alarms might go off. But oh, well, he'll be living in his van in the parking lot, so. That's, That's true. Yeah, yeah let's move there. into a van. Right, you heard it here first. <laughs> Me and Toby are taking this thing on the road. We're going back with Haslam. Steve-O is Steve doing his podcast out of his van. Yeah, one of my friends, he played up in Hull up north, and one of my friends hippie jumped him on stage. <laughs> Did, didn't he, he adopted a dog from Hull? 
He Steve went. To, he went to a oh, dog amazing. show when he was there and adopted a dog. And huh? then he's taking the dog. He's got a. He's got an English dog now. Yeah. No, yeah. He goes take... woof, mate. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna adopt. Right. Okay. Oh, okay. He's, gonna, he's gonna inhale the chili cheddar or whatever the hell that is. Oh, nice. You can have nightmares. <laughs> I'm, I might have more when I go home. You're going to need to wear a diaper cheese, when you go to bed, though. Cheese and, <laughs> cheese and crackers on. He has to wear one anyway. <laughs> I'm um, sorry, what was that? I've got, nothing. I've got the... But no, it sounds like what you're doing with the, with mm. the brand is good and a positive fit. Well, I want, it, I want to be good. I mean, because I feel like skating's given me so much. I want to at least try to help somebody give it back, give back to skating. And, and, and I just need the... You know, I need the... Uh, well, the um, kick up the ass to help me move this thing on. Um, the Raymond's Foundation were doing online courses, weren't they? To yeah, I, ha I haven't done one. I want to do one. Um, mental health first aiders. Yeah, which is probably see that's awesome. That's so like I want to do stuff like that. That'd be amazing. But again, I don't have the um, I don't have the other half of it. I mean, if the other half would come in and like I had uh, I was confident in um, you know the the um, credibility in that realm and we could do it together then it would be perfect yeah and, and, and there might be avenues uh uh of that happening maybe next year or something so hopefully that'll um hopefully we can put, turn it into something crazy good so yeah other than that i just literally make it uh so i have an outlet to draw and i make pretty much my board size only <laughs> what size are you riding I write a eight and a half, but right. it's it's stamped eight and a half, <clears throat> but it's like a eight four seven nine. Okay. You can skate nerds will probably attention to detail. Probably Fucking you know. I mean, we we go. I mean, prob I geek out about it a lot more yeah. than you, I guess. But you're a you geek out about wheelbase. Mm. I don't really go Five. too far as long 14 as fourteen and a quarter. As long as I have. Um, the Vision Lee Ralph shape. Sean knows how much I love that shape. That like 1987 Vision Lee Ralph shape. Is that the one where it's so the, specific? The, the it's guy got, crumpled in the. I've bunny. got one downstairs. Yeah, you right. got you got to go yeah. on it. It's did you such see, a fucking lovely shape. Did you see Kate's cut out the one you sold him? So he's he's just the graphic. Is he just going to ride that as a board? No, it's just yeah. a bit of artwork. Oh, I thought he was going to like do something on it. Well, he might so, do, so, but that'd yeah. be cool. Man. I bought two. Lee Ralph boards on sale from £100 to £30 <coughs> each through like a Black Friday <coughs> internet deal. And one of them came as the original concave, so it was completely flat. And I sold it to one of our mates. And he went round the saw and cut out the guy that's crumpled up on it to put it on his wall. And he did it really fucking good. That's Kate, he does all that kind of stuff. You ever see a guy called um, Toy Box Monster? Toy, no. Yeah, you should check. He does toy box monster. Yeah, he he does art like that, and it's so sick. Mm. It layered, like he'll cut a graphic. He'll, I don't know if he cuts it out of a board or not, but he'll do like the Reaper, but it'll be layered, so it mm. looks like the Reaper. But it's all like, yeah, it's so sick. He did one for me, and then it, my storage unit got stolen. And everything I own, got. Sake. you don't have <laughs> much luck around stuff. a lot of people. It's a lot of thieves around you. Do you think there's one guy that's following you for your whole career, and he's just like. When am I going to strike After again? He, no, no, what it was is one guy saw the Axions in your car all them years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, this guy's got products and he's followed you around forever. Yeah, no, the, the storage unit was this fella. a lot different. Yeah, that was that was one of them. But he did, he's done a couple, like the Powell one, he's done all sorts of them. It's so good. It's yeah, the perfect. Some of like Spitfire logo. And yeah, Spitfire. And yeah. Like, uh, the oh, he's done the slasher, the Santa Cruz slasher guy. Yeah, yeah, slasher wow. guy too. Yeah, he'll do board graphics. Like he'll do old like cross of boards and mm. like all these different board graphics and he'll make it so it's like, looks like it's a layer. So it like stacks up. So when you're looking at it, it's 3D. Yeah, it's or... perfect though. Like he, I don't know how the hell he paints it or I don't know what he does with it. It's like so good. Um, let's talk video games being in a video game. EA Skate. Yeah. Because that's when you transcend from a skateboarder and a good one to a... If you're in a game... You you kind of... That's like the next yeah, level of yeah. professional well, skateboarding. I mean, was, How did that come about? It was... Because uh, they did a lot of the... Well, I was skating... Uh, skating in Vancouver in 97. I moved in Vancouver in 97. I started skating. I was doing the UBC thing, all that stuff, like the mm -hmm. university thing. 
So I was from 97 until whenever that game started. What was that, 2008? When was that? The first skate was 2007. Fraser's on it. Maybe, maybe 2008. I think it was two, 2007. 2007. 14th so was, of September, 2007. That was cheese and crackers. So I was, uh, I'd been skating Vancouver, so I knew everybody in the skate scene of Vancouver at that time. <laughs> and <clears throat> EA was doing that out of Vancouver. Uh, and yeah. my buddy, Cuz, and Darren were guys that I knew from the scene there and yeah. they were leading that whole thing. So they were choosing, you know, they Vancouver guys, me and Chalmers. And There's them. a character in the game called Cuz. That's the guy, that's that, Chris you, Perry. That's Cuz, that's one of the guys that- Oh, right, yeah, that's a real He's dude. like the guy that ran the show with, with Darren. Oh, nice. Oh, amazing. Yeah, yeah so he was in there uh, doing it and- uh, So they're getting you, Chalmers. We, yeah, we- man was in one as well. Yeah, Jimmy, yeah, they had uh, they had all the guys to come up, like all the, you know, Danny Witt, whoever was in it, I can't yeah. even remember. Like, Duffy whatever. was in it, wasn't he? Duffy was in it, Duffy Dill was in it, Navrat. P-Rod, Navarrette. Yeah, yeah, all these dudes were coming up, but I was already there. Yeah. Me and Chalmers was like Chalmers did all the like he did all the hill bombing audio sounds and it's all the when you're going over oh, so he would do all that stuff and nice. then I would go there and do um a lot of the the mocap flip trick stuff like cavemaning all the caveman stuff yeah, yeah. was me and someone else like hippie jumping we would do all this hitting making grunt noises hitting people like all that stuff um and yeah it was just came about because I I was you know, accelerating through the round three and the cheese and crackers things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was uh, just the Canadian pro at the time and, and they were right around the corner. Right there. Uh, so, and, and I was pretty good at doing flat ground tricks. So they would, you know, I, I did a lot of the um, mocap for the flat ground stuff. So at the time, for the first, second, and third, and the skate it for the Wii, mm -hmm. Wii skate it. I did it. I did a bunch of stuff for that too. Oh. Um, but yeah, it was amazing. It's yeah. like, what an experience. Yeah, I know it's crazy. There was a, I did a bunch. There was like, obviously, we had PJ, we had Chris Cole. Like, are these, I mean, they're going to, Mike Carroll, they're going to do whatever. All they, like, we just needed the, um, we'd, everybody could do whatever they could do. And then if we wanted to, like, how do we do a 360 inward heel? Like, who has that? Haslam. PJ. Like, I tried, I didn't, PJ. I couldn't do Haslam. it. Um, who could do it? Mike Carroll, I think, did Mike a Carroll. nollie one. Oh, okay. But all they needed was the motion. They didn't. You didn't have to land it. You just needed the motion because then mm. they would attach the landing yeah, that yeah. they already had to the motion just of the three six. Know how to move the ball, like. the initial flip and the f rotation. That's it. Oh, amazing. But I think he did a nollie three sixteen or hill. Uh, since then, I've learned them. Uh, We're gonna go film one. Tonight. But I don't. I mean, not good. But. I have learned them. I mean, PJ was doing all sorts. Chris Cole is doing all sorts. Mm. You know, I was doing my thing. So there was a bunch of us doing it. But was that all in the the green suit? Yeah, I yeah. was wearing Tiger. I think they said I was wearing a Tiger Woods one, where he's yeah. oh, uh, nice. doing the PJ Tiger <laughs> Tiger outfit. But they would do all the <laughs> like the Def Jam. Um, yeah, like the boxing games and like. Well, it was like a Def Jam one where they were like Death, was it? fighting, so, but they were oh, like I love that game. Like my, uh, you know, the ones that like yeah. they're like rapper guys, but you're like yeah, uh, Def yeah. Jam fight for New York. Yeah, yeah they Def were. Jam yeah, they were. I think they would do all. Icon was the same year. Oh, was it Def Jam Icon with got like released Red in Man Method well. Man? Yeah, I yeah. think they were doing that in yeah. the in the. I mean, because they had a there was a space with like cameras everywhere. You mm. know what I mean? Yeah. So they they. Um, they were doing that. Oh, and I also was a part of, um, there was a show, the Tony Hawk did a thing called uh, Boom Boom uh, Sabotage. Yeah. yeah. And I was a care. I uh, mostly kept for a character in that too. Sick. So I was one of those characters in that Boom Boom Sabotage uh, computer generated cartoon that movie that he did about skaters. This is going to sound like I'm taking the piss, but I'm not. Did they have to put the motion capture stuff on your beard as well? No, no, no. no. Right, okay. Well, they couldn't do the beard. I couldn't do the hair. That's why the hair was in the the, the toque and the beanie. Right. Because it, the Just it looks like a beanie too. I knew it. 
Yeah. Well, yeah. I wasn't sure which one you guys use here. Bonnet. What would you guys use? Because <laughs> I've, I've used, because I've said to people before, like Canadians, when I've sent stuff to my friends, they ask, like, do you want a beanie hat? And they're like, don't you mean a toque? Yeah. yeah I've yeah. never heard it. But yeah, that's yeah. the first time I heard it was when I used to send stuff to Peterborough and Ontario. Yeah. No. It was a very interesting place to be sending stuff to. <laughs> yeah, Peterborough, yeah, yeah. It was super cheap to, super cheap to send stuff to Canada as well. Not bad. <laughs> just in case we're talking about fucking yeah. video games he's talking attention. about the cost of sending shit. I'm just yeah. saying when I start sending in packages yeah. it's not going to cost a lot yeah, so they, anyway yeah they had uh, they couldn't do hair very yeah. good because it would uh, it looked like you basically had a t-shirt on your head mm. uh, so yeah. the hair had to be up and I mean this was just a solid thing so they just did it and I, I think mm. it was pretty short I had a I might have even had one Actually, mm. no, you got one in it. I think like a, it was like a little one though, wasn't it? It wasn't big. Google Chris Haslam skate, uh, skate one, two, or three. Well, what was one of them? You got like green trousers, your hair tucked in. Well, one of them, I went to a metal festival in Grass Pop, the Gra uh, in Belgium, Grass Pop Metal Festival, and I had a, I had the wristband on and I wore it just i kept it on just so that when we did this, it would be on my wrist for the video game. No, oh, no way. Oh, right. So there's a there's a what's um. The Grass perks button. that come along from being in a video game. Do you get like sent all, all the games consoles? No, I well at the time I didn't get any game console. I had I had a I think I had an Xbox at the time, and I think that was the one they were doing the testing for the game on. I think like not mine specific, but Xbox was the hmm. system. But I would go in there and I had a, like all the at games, whatever I wanted, yeah. That's the opening, and that's not Haslam on that game. I just typed Sorry. in Chris Haslam skate one. And Sorry, that's what came up. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't. It wasn't. That Chris. was no. That was a complete. That, <laughs> that was, was an. That NPC. was the first. That's why I chuckled because that, that was like, an NPC character in an almost T-shirt. That was not Haslam. <laughs> yeah. So I was. Uh, I you get they would like, literally just whatever you wanted in terms of games and stuff. Yeah. So I had shitloads of them. Yeah. And then they all got stolen in my warehouse. Fucking oh, hell. Oh, for God's sake. Again. What else is going Jesus. on here? Well, they stole they stole uh, Les Paul guitars, Schecter, uh, uh, Skips and SGs. They stole everything. Tax, everything. It's Fuck theft it. legal in Canada. Well, in the U.S. In, the, in L.A., get this, in L.A., I think they're in L.A. You can go and rob a place from nine hundred dollars and Up run to out a thousand and boxes. they can't do anything about it that's why it's those videos what? at the minute people just going in shops and putting night yeah shoes i think in that's bags. what the, the yeah and they just passed that law for petty crime to not be punishable or something and like. if you go and they chase after them you could probably get fired for being a liability fucking hell the world is just <laughs> fucked isn't it like that that is um the character the image I sent you. It's not. It hundred percent is. I've got the same picture like of it, him. and it's Let got me the text it. next to it. Hometown, everything. Yeah. Is that you? That yeah. does not. No. I don't remember confirmed. that character. Chris yeah. Haslam has confirmed that is Chris Haslam. <laughs> look like a Neanderthal. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't look right, does it? Anyway. But see the hair. I couldn't have the hair down. Yeah, I guess so. Who's your most favourite UK and European skaters of all time? Because we were saying, you you know, you're quite a well-travelled Very well-travelled. So we feel like you know quite a lot about UK and UK European guys. skating. Obviously, Halford's got to be one of them. He's an incredible yeah, skateboarder. Yeah. Well, well that, both of those, uh, Zachary and, and Halford. Yeah. I was with them a couple of weekends um, ago at a competition, and they are just so... Well, there's, like, something about, like, the f it looked like he was just, like, made a noodle. There was nothing... Stopping him from moving his board. What's that, Jordan? Yeah, he, he does. He does that uh, like Coping Axel dances. Stool then goes to disaster, and then he body varials round and then keeps it going. It's like it, he does, but it just the way that is is because he's got that thing that's just like it doesn't look like there's any uh, there's anything stopping him from moving about, and like there's no the weight's always in the right spot, and it's he's got something there, and and you know, Halford's the same. He's like. You know, he just looks like a he looks like a mess outside. But when he gets on his board, he's just just annihilates. Yeah. He's got some crazy tricks as well. When did you meet them both? You've known him for quite a while, right? I think it was on a trip with Halford. And like uh, Halford, Greece we went to Greece. Um, yeah, he was uh, he was on that trip to Gre one of the Red Bull trips to Greece. I was on. Uh, I never met uh, Jordan before. I just seen footage of him like ollieing out of a fucking. Back lips, back disaster, or something on a van sign, and like, oh yeah, a bunch right of there. other of these mm. weird 
things that didn't look like were possible, but um, most of the time it was just Hal. Halford was just the guy because I, I went on that Greece trip with him, and we we were just skating on, having shooting the shit on the trip. He's and had a kid time. now as well. Isn't he? Yeah, he does. Yeah, his dad life. Yeah. Hi, it's Toby here, your mum's favourite presenter for the Brain Drain Show. I'm here to talk to you about roller snakes, and I've got an absolutely fantastic double-digit discount code to give you, so stay tuned. Roller Snakes was founded in 1985 by Sir Paul Haynes, which makes it one of the UK's oldest skater-owned stores. Roller Snakes stocks all the shit-hot brands, including Adidas, Brixton, Carhartt, DC, Element, Independent, Levi's, New Balance, Palace, Polar, Santa Cruz, Spitfire, Thrasher, Volcom and Vans, and many, many more. At Roller Snakes, there is a free-to-use indoor skate park, indoor mini ramp, and outdoor skate park, which I designed, and it's really good, and everyone loves it, and if you don't, and you suck, don't come here. We also put on numerous events throughout the year where you can turn up for free and win loads of prizes. Roller Snakes have given us a discount code for Brain Drain listeners. Enter Brain Drain 10 at checkout for 10% off your next order. Minimum spend £30, terms and conditions apply. Go to rollersnakes.co.uk and buy all of your stuff and things immediately, if not sooner. That was me, your mum's new best friend, and I'm looking into the camera now, and hopefully looking into your mum's soul. How is your mum? Tell your mum to stop texting me. Over and out. Goodbye. Um, my era of skating was like Rowley, uh, yeah. like Tom Penny, like these guys. I mean, Wayne Wright. Yeah, Wayne Wright. Um, they were guys like uh, Howard Cook. Oh, man. Yeah, fucking hell, I'd love to get What a good it. random one. Yeah, like That's Howard. Insane. I remember seeing Howard skating in, in one of the mini ramps I was skating. Because what do you ride for? Not at heroin. He was on. He, he rode was for, on. He no, rode for heroin. Like bef before, before that. Consolidated. Consolidated. Yeah, yeah, he was. So he would skate. Um, when Slam City Jam was in Vancouver, I don't know if he was going there, but he would skate a mini ramp there. And I remember him. You know, just a little guy, but he was just destroying the mini ramp. Yeah, he. There's people that skate for heroin that have never seen Howard Cook <laughs> skate in person. That's crazy. Yeah, I, I got to watch Howard skate. That's pretty fun. That's uh, that's sick. I, I called him when we were kind of in like Liverpool around those ways. Foz gave me his number. And um, I can remember- That was before I was sponsored too. I don't, I wasn't anybody. Like I just random kid seeing yeah. Howard skating and remembered him from skating the ramp I skated with him. Yeah. I mean, so I've only good. ever seen H, Howard Cook in the flesh once skating yeah like it's mad he's, he's quite powerful quite an elusive small, powerful character. fast yeah well i mean there's alex mall too like for the all Molly. the early flips guys like those are super cool yeah um yeah current i went on a trip with uh Karan Gal. yeah i went on a trip with him too really nice guy as well fucking like, unreal oh, we he went is. to like so I good we went to like burma or something yeah yeah Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like leave here and I'm be like, oh, why the hell did I say that name? I know, I know, I'm gonna. Uh, there's, there's more. Yeah, it's hard to remember sometimes. You know? it's well, just, I mean, you just think of like the immediate ones, like you know, Tom and Jeff and those. Yeah. Guys, and just like those were the ones that were just hitting it so hard when I was like formative skate years. It's like, mm -hmm. oh my yeah. god. They were the dudes from the UK that would doing it and then you know years later we had Ramers he kind of like carried the candle ben, ben was super good he had a he had like this I went a, I went a lot of places with Ben too he went he had this like very loose kind of Louis Barletta he fit yeah. perfect on, on oh yeah that enjoy stuff yeah. yeah he was so good super funny dude man such a bummer. yeah Ben was the best yeah. yeah well yeah this is um yeah if you said to me on Thursday that this was gonna no on Wednesday because we spoke on Thursday then I would not have believed that this podcast was gonna happen. Yeah, it's a good well, one. Yeah. I've enjoyed that. It's good. Yeah, it's been really um, good. Thanks for coming. No problem. Um, Flying all the way over from Canada. <laughs> just for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go and have a skate on a ramp. All right. Have a little. Any parting words of wisdom for anyone skateboarding that have dreams of skateboarding forever? Yeah, but that's um, impossible. You can't skate forever, yeah, can you? I know. Well, you, you can, can get close, you know. <laughs> yeah, there's longevity in it, man. You know, you know, like know your limits and work within it. Isn't that like a, isn't that like a drinking ad? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's <laughs> yeah. Ad. When the fun stops, stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Let's let's yeah. leave it on that one. Yeah. Then. Let's have a round of applause in the yeah. studio. Yeah. Thank, you Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Cheers for coming on. Thank right. You. Thank you. Let's go do cheese and crackers round two.
I'm vegetarian, but I'll eat the shit out of that cheese, that's for sure.